everybody, and welcome to I Sell Comics, the weekly comics report with Mike and Ming, broadcasting from the home of the comic book men, Jay and Sambov's secret stash. My name is Ming Chen, sitting across from me. Howdy. Hello, Mike Sapsic. What's up, man? Hello, how are you, Mike? We're doing well. What's hello, going on? hello. I'm, I, I'm excited to be back. We haven't done this in a couple weeks. We, we, were, in, we were off gallivanting in Dallas. Uh, we're uh, not doing it well. Or is this live right now? No, we live. We're, we're not. Still, we're still no. pre-recording. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. We're, well, well, you know. Well, you were gallivanting, and may I just say, uh, okay. you had a, a, a death in the family. I did. Condolences. Thank to you very Ms., much, Ms., Ms., Mrs. Debbie Chen. Yes. Mrs. No, Debbie not my. Don no, Debbie my Chen. wife is no, alive. Uh, my mother-in-law passed, passed away. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. So, Debbie, you know, um, in our thoughts and prayers. Yes, but you know, to make up for you know taking a week off, we've brought. We, we you. brought somebody back from Dallas with us. Yes, we did. Oh, for, right. I mean, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I, I hit out in a wheel well. Yeah, it was it was actually pretty awesome. <laughs> he did like one of those sto like Chinese stowaways <laughs> oh, in the horrible. airplane. Uh, now sitting to my left is uh, arguably one of the biggest guests we've had here on the show. Someone that we made, and you know, whenever we go to a con, the best thing I can have is we can come back with a friend, uh. and that's what happens. So sitting to my left is. Writer, director, actor, uh, doctor on TV, artist, musician, uh, husband to Jessica Blank, and dad, and dad, and more. Big toe, big big toe, <laughs> big toe, <laughs> big toe. <laughs> but most importantly, friend, Mr. Eric Jensen. Everybody, please Thank welcome you. Mr. Eric Jensen. Thank you, Ming and Mike, for inviting me here. Oh right. my God, it's not a at real all. Real pleasure. I feel oh. like I've, I feel like I've I've come to the mecca of comic books. This uh, is we we try. Yeah, it's really great in here. I yeah. love it. I, I I'm gonna come over and over and over again, even if you don't pay any attention to Excellent. me. Excellent. No, you are more than welcome. That's usually the hope of any of our customers if they just come here over and over. I, I wish I wish I would have had a comic book store like this in my neighborhood when I was a kid. I, th I think we, we all did. So do I. Yeah. I, yeah. Closest we had was. Uh, Dave Windorf at Comic Zone, yeah, Fantasy Zone. Sorry, not Comic Fantasy Zone. Zone. And, Fantasy uh, Zone and the um, the hobby shop in Madawan. Yeah, there, there was a we got. there was a comic book hobby shop in Minneapolis called Shinders. That was kind of my the Shinders? place. Yeah, it was called Shinders Books how, and Comics. How awful would it have been if it was like Shinders List? <laughs> Shinders God List. Off. Yeah, come on in, like your list. I think we'll we're, help you. I, no, don't <laughs> understand how you need. You've got a comic list, and we're helping you get through. As like, no, dude, you're wow, you're. It's wow. just wrong on so yeah, many yeah, levels. I know. Dude, what's Shin wrong with Schindler's you? pull list. Schindler's pull list. Schindler's yeah. pull list. Now, uh, now, Eric, you may you might know from uh, uh, he played Thurman Munson in the Bronx is Burning, the the uh, the mini series. Uh, you may know him as Derek. The captain. Uh, the cap. Yeah, yeah the, the captain. captain. The, the captain. Guy, yeah. May I just say Thurman Munson, my favorite all time professional sports. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, his death affected me so hard that. Um, that and one or two other things made me throw my back on baseball for a long time. Really? Yeah. What was uh, where did you hear about his death? Was it on the radio? Most was, people I talked to was on the radio. It was actually I came home. I was what like twelve? Mm. I think it was. 12 it was August second, nineteen seventy nine. I think yeah, I've got the I date was, right. Uh, no, I was uh, I was eleven, uh -huh. and I came home, and uh, boom, uh, it was it was awful. Uh -huh. I, mean, I was like, wow, this is this sucks. I was uh, watching. Wait a minute. Got back from like soccer camp. Okay. Or you played soccer? I, okay, oh, that's yeah. another. I, that's oh a story God, for another podcast, but okay. Um, and uh, sat down, was watching, I think it was Amazing Spider Man, you know, the 1960s. Sure, one. sure. And they Spider -Man, interrupted. Yeah, Spider -Man. yeah, yeah. yeah. Interrupted. It was, uh, it was W, w uh, Channel 5 wow. around here. And um, we interrupt this, you know, to bring you a very special news bulletin, Thurman Munson captain of the New York Yankees dead yeah I was like oh. I went down my father was, my father was a doctor and he had um, his office in our house it was like attached and I went down because my father for my uh, was it 11th birthday for my 11th birthday we had gone and seen the Yankees play saw them play the Blue Jays wow and um, that, that was like 11 months before wow and uh, I went down I'm just like and my father's like, like what? Oh wow, that's yeah. You know, my father's like, yeah. Holy crap, we just saw him. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, it was pretty. Just like wow. Well, it was. Uh, I mean, I, I when I I gained twenty five pounds for the part, and uh, 
and I well, knew, you could use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're kind of a stream <laughs> you're, you're 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 bean. I a lost thin. it. I lost. Well, I knew it was it wasn't anything I was asked to do. I knew it was important because like the the thing that people are most familiar with about ball players is their is their uh, their physicality and their yeah. stats, and so you know I knew facially I bore a good resemblance, but walking out of the trailer the first time out of makeup in my pinstripes with a little floppy extra bit of hair and, and uh, yeah the big kind of curly, curly yeah locks. i had the i had the months and i had the 70s oh, hair yeah, you know? it was the 70s, yeah. but you had i mean everyone was hairy yeah no i mean we were uh, it, it, yeah, it, everybody yeah. looked uh, uh, everybody yeah, in the uh, 70s okay, looked yeah, like right. they were a mechanic you know <laughs> and uh, and i walked out and like i just saw like there were two teamsters who just turned away they got tears in their eyes and i've never seen oh, a wow. teamster cry that's awesome yeah and it was and like but like another guy came up to me and he was like don't fuck it up <laughs> like, I like, won't. Don't, don't <laughs> Yikes, you know. And it was, yeah, but I had. Especially when you're doing it in New York, those people take things very seriously. No, they took it real seriously, and and you know, I'm not a I'm not a great ball player. I'm just okay, and so, but I had to learn to throw like him, hit like him, and and I, I still in in my swing. There's a little theorem in my swing still, which that's, makes me really that's happy. Awesome. That's awesome. It's so cool. Great. And then and then when the premiere happened and stuff, you know, Billy Martin's son came, and I met Goose Gossage, who was oh, one of yeah. Thurman's best friends, and. And uh, I got to meet um, the my, probably my greatest friend from the show that I'm still friends with is a guy named Marty Appel. Okay. Um, Marty was the was the uh, PR guy for the Yankees yeah. for for a decade during that whole time. And um, you know uh, you know the Bronx Zoo year in '78. I mean that was all Marty. Marty was handling all of that stuff. Um, when that when that when those two ball players switched wives, he had to. Kind of oh deal right, right. With I forgot. It. Yeah, you remember that. Right? With that. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was. Oof. But Marty's Talk got stories, it. and and you know it's just oh, no doubt. Anytime I want tickets to a Yankee game, I can go now, and 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 occasionally a couple people came up to me the con and mentioned that thing. It's the thing I'm yeah. the proudest of because he's so he's cool. one of my heroes too. He was yeah, the first awesome. ball player whose name I knew. He looked yeah. a little like my old man. You know, we were in Minnesota, so we were supposed to like the Twins, but secretly we would check the Yankee stats in the papers. Of course you would. You'd be like. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Harmon Killebrew. Ah, yeah, Thurman no, no, Munson, no. man. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Thurman Munson. And, yeah, exactly. And that was that was right when um, you had players becoming superstars. Yeah. This is when the it's the era of the endorsement deal, like a Reggie bar. Remember mm-hmm. Reggie bars? Remember, yeah, people uh, people they were on they were on people's seats, I guess, at the stadium and the people threw them. They were throwing Reggie bars at, they, they they got they given them for them. free and they stopped doing they it. They stopped yeah. doing it because Reggie bar they, they tasted terrible. They were awful. They, yeah. they, they were like um, <laughs> what are they called? Um, <laughs> chocolate turtles. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they were horrible and they get in your teeth. They were just awful. Yeah. Peanuts and, oh. It's like who who approved this? It's like, well you did, sir. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were really drunk and high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're on coke. Yeah. So you know, like me. Uh, say you're not a Yankee fan. You haven't seen that. You may have seen Eric in uh, CSI. You may have seen him in Gravity, or more recently, uh, you may have seen him on The Walking Dead as Doctor Stephen Edwards. But you had a joke one that you were going to pull out. I want to hear that one. Oh, and uh, you know, you may have seen him as Derek in, in the Martin Lawrence Tour de Force Black Knight. <laughs> Oh my god! Which I, I, you, you laugh and you were, you lived it, but uh, my brother and I were huge fans of that movie. Were you we, really? we, I saw it in the theater. Amazing! So say, how, how have I not busted your balls for that? It's not a bad. It's a good oh movie. Like, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it we, is. I mean, it is and it isn't. Uh, I mean, there's, um, there's... Uh, yeah, we used to go to this elementary golf course with the castle. It was like, hey, we're at Castle World. Like, holy oh. crap! Like, maybe we'll fall in and, wow. and transport to another to to a simpler time. <laughs> And but you know, in Black Knight. So that was not when Martin Lawrence was starting to lose his mind. It was like before that. It was right around then. Well, yeah, two thousand one, I believe. Yeah. Was it, oh, no. oh, am I allowed to say about him then, losing his mind? Does he does he monitor podcasts? I don't. For I don't think Martin monitors podcasts. Yeah. Pod, oh, monitor. it, people people talking about me still. He's okay. he was he was very kind to me. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So so. If but, you have a really good relationship, then that's all we need to say. No, no. It was it was it was interesting. I mean, he's you know he's got a he's got a space around him that so he can do his funny stuff and and it's and it's a it's a it's a really well kept space. He's got good people that help him maintain his focus, which is. I mean, I, we should all be so lucky to have somebody like that. I and think it's kind of that we're not married to, you know. Right, and it's kind of important that you know, for certain people, have, uh-huh. have them do the focus. Thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Me, I'm Mr. Distracto. I'll talk to anybody. So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> like, here, you know. I think that's exactly. why we're friends. I think that might be why we're friends now. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a recent TV watcher, you may have seen Eric in a little TV show called The Walking Dead, uh, played. Dr. Stephen Edwards from Grady Memorial Hospital, yeah, uh, part of the Grady Bunch, which uh, I thought was a little clever name. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yes, or you know, uh, A.K.A. the Nice Doctor. 
Tom Grady more. Or, or, you know, I guess. I don't I know. Mean, I mean, were, it's sort of... nicer than anyone else though, in the hospital. <laughs> That's, I mean, I can't, uh, you know, I can't name one other redeeming character other than Beth and Noah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Dr. Edwards. I wouldn't yeah. trust anybody who's nice in that world. No, it's absolutely true. not. Although, you know what? Um, to be honest with you, I... You're, you're absolutely right. I, I think that once you have your core, uh-huh. core people, yeah. and uh, I, I gotta be honest, I went back and um, since Dallas, okay. I went back and I, I reread all of my uh, Walking Dead omnibus. Yes. I mean, from one on. Really? And, oh yeah. Uh-huh. And, and uh, I mean, it's binge watch, binge read. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm like that too. Yeah. So uh, now I'm in the middle of all that war. Okay. Uh-huh. So okay. I'm, but uh, not to spoil anything, I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay, thank you. Anybody who's who's watching mm-hmm. and doesn't read the comics, there's a lot of stuff that's coming up mm-hmm. that they don't necessarily follow line for line for the comic book. Mm-hmm. Right, which so, is which is great. Fantastic. Uh, the hospital part being one of them. I mean, that's right. pretty awesome. And uh, anyone who's you know listening, you you love the uh, the TV show in the comic books. Andrea's still alive. Uh-huh. Yes, right. she is still alive now, right. and Dale lasted a lot longer than uh, than Jeff Jeffrey did. Demond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you know that's, that's. I just did Blacklist. Blacklist with Jeffrey. He he played my dad on Blacklist. Recently. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, we're I both, love Blacklist. We're both yeah. fans and of Blacklist. that was you. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap! It was. <laughs> oh my god! I like god. to disappear. Nobody recognizes me. Well, until Walking Dead, what, nobody what? recognized me on the subway. Well, or that's anything. awesome because you shaved. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, oh my god! And we're different glasses. I just watched it. I'll show you. And I. Oh my. That was the phenomenal. Maybe this will help. Oh wait, he's got the blacklist oh, he glasses. Does. The black oh, there, oh, <laughs> there they are. You there know, I could, I could actually so auction these off for about fifty bucks a piece. I could like you make a little, money, make a little extra well, money on the radio you know, here. Let's put it towards the King family fortune, <laughs> exactly, shall we? Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I'm, that was that was excellent. Jeff Demond is like a master actor. I saw him on Broadway uh, twenty years ago in something in Arthur Miller's The Price. Wow. And and I'd known his work before. I'd almost been in the Green Mile. Frank Darabont had okay. almost cast me in that. And uh, and so I went to see it, and, and, and I was just like, oh, what a great movie, you know. And, and, and him in particular, his performance I loved, but the second I saw him on Broadway, I, rem- I, I knew what his name was, and I would make go out of my way to see whatever he was in. And then he got to play my dad, which was like That's a little slice of heaven. I thought, so, may I? Yeah. Not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Mike. Hey, Red. That's good, no Mike. hard feelings. <laughs> Um, well, Green Mile would have been a completely different movie. <laughs> <but> Eric <laughs> Jensen is John Coffey. Like the, you like the, actually have like to the be, drink, um, but only spelled different. Yeah, no, you'd have to be... Um, <laughs> Coffee um, with a little extra cream. Right. Just a little bit. Convict. Yeah, no, there was, there was, I think there were a couple of parts that I auditioned for, and they brought me in. That Mally Finn, uh, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, was a, a casting director, who, an early casting director, who got me a couple of breaks. And, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm so, uh, I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm even thrilled, more just, I'm, I'm like thrilled that you had that reaction. Oh, yeah. That makes oh, me God. so happy. Like, yeah. you, you're like, like a chameleon. I was never, ever in this to be famous. So Fantastic. it's like, it, or recognized. And that's like, you, that's a satisfying. Let's put it this way. You will be. I don't know. Just like Jeffrey Demon is that guy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, yeah. And it's the first time I've ever noticed him was in Storm of the Century. Oh, right on. Yeah. I love that. Wow. Movie. Yeah. yeah. And it's very, one of Stephen King. It, it was actually a That's a that's deep st- cut. You are a Stephen King Stephen fan. King. It's not that deep. Oh, he my is. God. But he had written it for um, just... Yeah, and wasn't where did they get it? it was uh, sci-fi? Uh huh. Sure. Sci-fi yeah. Channel. Sure. Sure. So, Storm of the Century was like um, it had uh, Casey Zemenko in it. Right on. So right like, on. Oh my God, it's got Casey Zemenko. In right on. It. Anything with Casey Zemenko, yeah, you're you're throwing dice. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And my uh, first my first movie was a Stephen King movie. The first and, and I'm terrible in it. Uh, it was a movie called The Dark Half. I had one line in it. George uh, George Romero had almost hired me for a lead in in uh, the remake, this Tom Savini remake, of Night of the Living Dead. I know okay. you're a horror fan. Yes. And uh, and then after that, I got so close, and he said, you know, um, we'll we'll put you in our next movie. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah. And he remembered. And the next time he called me in, and, and that was it. So so he played cool. with the yo-yo on set, and I got to. Meet Tim Hutton and that's, well, that's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> and I said, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. You Tim know? Hutton, uh, pre-Groupon commercial, so good on him. Yeah. So uh, uh, me and Mike and Ryan head down to Walker Stalker Dallas. Uh, saw you were on the guest list. Right on. And um, uh, you'd never done one of those before, so uh, you know we we you know it's when we see that we're like oh we'd like to meet this guy. Uh. 
instead the morning of the con I'm setting up we're putting up our eight by glossy eight by tens we're whipping up our sharpies and all of a sudden this dude comes whipping around the corner he's armed with trade paperbacks and he introduced himself and it was you yeah it was yeah. that which we're, we're and you, you um you know you came up and you're like yeah, I, I love the show you guys are great we're you like, were friendly was well, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Minnesota like yes, you know you guys yeah. are all, and to be honest with you I figure that if the zombie apocalypse happens it's gonna start in Minnesota oh definitely we're friendly but we all have shotguns it's so I can't think of a better place even better. you know to do it we everybody's got a gun rack um, yeah no it, it uh, uh, you know I just I love you guys on television Thank I you love so much. the store I love I love you guys making uh, comics and and comic artists part of the mainstream conversation you know um, that's that's part of our the, the goal, the ultimate goal is to make, you know, make it cool again. Because mm -hmm. there was once a time in the 60s when it was, and I think I put this um, this way. Mm -hmm. It's like there was a time when we were, uh, comics were a subculture, mm -hmm. then we were pop culture, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that we just become a culture. I, I think we're there. I, I'm pretty I sure we're we there. are. The fact that they're doing a 24-hour Marvel movie marathon yes. before uh, Avengers two. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. I think that that's. I think we've achieved that goal. Uh, and are you guys gonna go? We we've decided that we're too old for <laughs> no, this. No, actually, I hate to tell you this, man. I might be gone. You're gonna do it? I'm. My my kids oh, are boy. like. You'll never do that for us, Pop. No, do they want to go? They want to go. They want to go. And my oh, wife dude. Is, my wife is saying to me, she wants to go. Let's go. She wants to wow. go. So I'm, I might go. Wow. Wow. I don't know. Well, you can always pull that out if they're ever like, you know, if they're ever yeah, you lippy suck, or dad. Like, dad, you no, you remember that time I took yeah, you to yeah, that's right. A dad that's, who sucks can, does not take their child to a twenty four hour Exactly and that festival. Uh, going back to, to what I the story I was telling you uh -huh. before, my father took me and like eight friends to Yankee Stadium to see them play the Blue right. Jays for my, my birthday. Yeah. I could never, never get pissed at him after yeah. that. Never no. did. Never did even his, I'm taking the car away from you for a month. You suck. Well, you want, to, you want to back that up? You want to remember when you were 10? 10 or 11? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Yankee, Yankee Stadium baseball games about three hours maybe. We're talking, I think it's like 20, it's 20, 27 hours without Dude, the Avengers. 1979. 1978. Yes. The Bronx. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Right on. Fair enough. And he had yeah. to bring the kids up. He's, yeah, he is Fair responsible enough. for the safety okay. of eight other children. <laughs> okay, I, I take it back. So. Was he by himself? No, he he brought uh, he brought a friend, a drinking brought, buddy. Yeah, no, no, it was uncle, actually, uncle, no. uncle Moore. Uh, it was actually it was Uncle Walter. Uncle Walter. There was a guy named Uncle Walter. Uncle, yeah. of course. I had an uncle Walter. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was J.R. Moore's um, J.R. Moore who was one of the guys, one of the one of the eight guys that went up with us. Uh -huh. um, he uh, it was his uncle. Oh, cool. And he was. You know, we used to call him Uncle Walter, so right on. Uncle Walter took us up there. It was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so you got to understand, uh, you know, we get invited to Walker Starter Con because our show comes on after The Walking Dead. Sure. We're yeah. invited. To, um, we're, we're, we're coattail riders oh, from yeah. way back. And, oh, thank, God. and God bless those coattails. I will ride those coattails for the rest of my life if I can. And you will. Trust me, you will. So I kind of don't have any choice now. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, God bless yeah. that. Uh, so for <laughs> cast members... To approach us such as, instead yeah, of the other way around is crazy. Well, I mean, I was, so, I was explaining this to Scott Gimple. I mean, when he called me, I, I found out I'd gotten the part, and, and uh, it was weird because there was a Junior Kimbrough record on my floor, and that's the music I listened to and the thing. And, and, and it all seemed like it was supposed to happen. Yeah. I'd auditioned for a couple other parts, actually. I auditioned to play Eugene. And, oh, okay. And, really? Oh, oh it, I gave a terrible audition too. Like, there's a piece of tape out there that's horrible. There's a I, there's I, you I and Eugene. Oh, it's horrible. I'm smarter than you. I really, I really <laughs> want. Like, I mean, I wouldn't mind if The Walking Dead people put it up because it's it's so it just so doesn't like it so doesn't do what Josh does. Like, what he does is so indelible. I think yeah, I think Josh know? is one of my favorite parts. He, of he really is. He's one of mine too. And 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 I was confused. And then because I got a call, they said he's a scientist, and I was like, okay, great, I'll do that thing. And they were like, then I get a call like. And, and I don't think I'd read that far in the book yet, in okay. the comics yet. And I got a call like 10 minutes later. Oh, also, he's got a, a, an accent, a southern accent. Yeah. And then I was like, I, how does a guy, how do you, I don't know how to, those, those are two balls that are just right. kind of not quite okay. lining up for me. 
And uh, but you know, I guess I must have comported myself all right because when this part came along. Right. Oh, and number really three, uh, you need a mullet. Yeah, exactly, like, oh, exactly. Yeah, uh, Which I did have. I had a mullet when I was uh, when I was playing hockey when I was a kid when I was uh, uh, in Minnesota. So I had a little mullet. Yeah. Well, okay, so you okay? Yeah, yeah sure. You know, mullet power. Yeah, sure, totally. But but you know, when Scott called me, I mean, the first yeah. thing we talked about was we talked about comic books. We talked about uh, Dungeons and Dragons. We talked about. All sorts of other stuff, and uh, and then we got to talking about Walking Dead a little bit. Yeah, and, and it was it was clear just from that conversation that a I was going to have a lot of fun, and b it was going to be a life changing experience. Yeah, so, and, and both happened, happened. Yeah, both happened kind of at once, you know. That's that's awesome. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. For you to approach us, that's huge for us. Oh, it, I mean, it doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. Doesn't happen. I'm, often. I'm literally like, I I don't miss a show when I'm when I'm at home or yeah. when I'm, I've even watched you guys when I'm like writing. Like if I'm writing a script or something <laughs> like that, I have you guys on, so it sort of feels like I'm kind of in the comic shop. It's like guys. why why is it what the tone of the script just turns so snarky? Yeah, like, exactly. oh, I was watching Brian. <laughs> A lot of Brian Johnson. All my characters episode. are abusing each other. I know. Yeah, I'm <laughs> making fun of a little Asian boy. Like, what? What's going on here? Uh, the the but, fact that you can still consider yourself a boy <laughs> speaks volumes about true. you. True. It's a good point. As we sit amidst the toys and yeah. the drawings yeah, that we I'm, all love. Uh, hey, you know what? The only difference between boys and men are the price of their toys. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. what we saw of you on the show and, and you know previous project, we knew you were a badass. All right. We knew you were an actor. Uh, what we did not know, and you were armed with trade paperbacks for us that you're yeah, a, this was amazing to me uh-huh. that you're a comic book writer yeah yes you're a creator and it's it's amazing and i i read your book and uh for those who aren't familiar those those of you who aren't hip it's called the reconcilers yes yeah the reconcilers and uh full color 96 page issue which is i have right here beautiful take a look which, at that if you're watching on youtube i'm holding it right in front of you right here co-created by eric r emery bright who was on the wire and, as, and amongst many other projects? Oh, you did your research, yeah. No, Emery's, Emery's like Emery's like he's him and Peel brought me on board to to make the comic and we turned it into something uh, something different, something new for us. Yeah, um, it's a great it's a great partnership. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, Emery, your writing partner, uh, what, Liberia, he's a co-creator. He, co-creator. Uh, yeah, he's from Liberia and he's just got a really interesting history. He's got like sixteen brothers and sisters. Um, he's a he's a lawyer and an actor. Um, he's a multi guy as well he likes to do different stuff just a really smart Sounds dude like his mom and dad were multi yeah too, yeah so, i mean yeah. they they you know it, it you know and coming from that country it's a that's a hard place to grow up it's a hard place to live and right know. he actually escaped yeah and, uh, put a lot of his experiences growing up in liberia in, in yeah. into this book he said he said to me uh, when he was a kid and i don't think i'm getting this wrong he saw an uncle of his on television dragged into a stadium to be executed Wow. Yeah, Emery's seen some real shit, and, yeah. and I and that kind of reality, we, do, we he wanted to kind of pay tribute to that with one of the characters who's who's Liberian. Yeah, yeah, Ekuntai. It's it's a it's a fun uh, it's a fun character. It's you know, fun to write. Yeah. So yeah, we had no idea you were you were a geek, Major. comic book be- geek, yeah. comic book fan, yeah. comic book creator. Uh, so yeah, we both read your book. I read it. Uh, oh, yeah. Read it on the airplane, yeah. and uh, we we both love it. Uh, but for good. all the kids out there who haven't read it. Uh, your, your description of the plot. Uh, well, you know, my, my dad asked me a question one time. He said, or, or he made a comment one time that really kind of sat with me for a very long time. Is he, he said, if you take capitalism to its like absurd extreme, mm-hmm. one guy owns everything. And I, I was like, one guy wins. And I was like, mm-hmm. w- w- really? And I thought about that and I was like, yeah. I mean, ultimately, like if it gets down to it, it's two people competing and then one of it's going to be like that, that episode of Star Trek where it's like the half white guy versus yeah. the half black guy, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and so I uh, sort of, when they brought me this thing, I kind of started to imagine a world that was about to kind of become that, like, you know, that was just moments away from being that. Right. Um, and, and I've always been a fan of James Cameron movies like The Abyss, those, those team movies that yes. he did in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, The Abyss, Aliens, Aliens. Uh, just, you know, just yeah, the camaraderie. Exactly. And obviously I love post-apocalyptic stuff. I, I think part of loving post-apocalyptic, I think you kind of have to love that genre to kind of be on The Walking Dead. You know, you yeah. have to understand <laughs> that. You know, Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I think you have to kind of love the, that. Uh, if you're a comic book fan, yeah, I yeah, mean, just because that's every dystopian future that we've ever seen is best exemplified in any comic book. Like exactly. Days of Future Past, um, Deadbone, 
I mean, I know, yes. yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pulling out. I mean, that's, that's, that, I mean, but like, you know, uh, uh, Fly, Fly, Trap, and Charlie, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I loved, I loved all of those um, epic comics and, and obviously heavy metal. Right. I was a big, um, I was a big Mobius fan. Okay. Um, even though our palette is different than that, I think initially I thought maybe we'd have more of a European palette um, in the book. Um, but you know we got Moose Bauman to come into the colors, and he's my favorite Green Lantern colorist. So, awesome. so you know it it, it all kind of came together, and and uh, I worked on the script for about a year, and um, and then uh, I started to draw some characters and design some stuff, and um, and then we had uh, an artist come on board who didn't quite match up with some stuff that we wanted to do, but him and his brother were um, engineers. And so we did keep all of their designs, I all of the, it, all of the designs, cool. and they, they spin around. There's three, they're three dimensional. They're all done on AutoCAD. Right. Okay. So they yeah. were more industrial designs. It was like, it was all this they, industrial stuff. That I wanted all of the tech, just like an alien, to look like it worked. Right. I wanted any of. I didn't want anything to be faked. And then finally, I found this dude named Shep Hendricks, who just like I can I could say I want the frame to look like this and this, and it'd come back, and that's exactly what was in my head. You made it happen. So you he kept you kept him in all the arts by Shep Hendricks. He was also old school too, which is like you know I'm a, I'm a, a, a fan of um, uh, oh gosh the name is escaping me now, but I'm a huge fan of, of Jack Kirby. I'm a huge fan of Joe Kubert. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of early uh, Ditko, okay. um, and and I wanted somebody who had sort of a classic style, you know, um, uh, like I can't pronounce his name. Not as sort of not as sort of Buscema, 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 Buscema. Yeah. That's it. I've only read it. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> not not sort you of in that zone, well. but you know, I liked um, I like uh, uh, Alan Moore's artist on Watchmen. Uh, uh, Watchmen, Dave Gibbons. Dave, Dave yes. Gibbons. I love Gibbons. I have a Doctor Who. Uh, drawing of his on my wall, That's amazing. and his he's got a simplicity of line. He's got an, an economy that really lets you follow the sequential art. Right, and he's also a very interesting guy. Is he really? I'd shot. love to meet him. Did you talk to him? We did. We wow. podcasted with him. We did. We interviewed yeah. him. In Dude, I'm not the biggest guy who's been here. Dave Gibbons is the biggest guy. Oh. One of the, I mean, he's a giant. <laughs> well, like, he was not here. Was oh, Florida. okay. We're in Miami. Oh, Miami, okay. So. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're the biggest guy. <laughs> yeah, but you still retain that title. <laughs> Winner and still champion. <laughs> well. So, so what was it like? What's he like? He's very British. Is he? And he's got a wicked sense of humor. Really? Because uh, Ming pulled out one of his standard questions. And um, it, was day, it was day one. It was day one, yes. It was day one. I was suffering with this wicked... I'm not a big traveler. Uh -huh. I'm not a really good traveler either. Uh -huh. um, whenever I, I go to a different climate, it like kicks my ass. Uh -huh. So I'm like, oh my God. And I've got this huge um, headache like behind... My, my eyes and I'm, every time I, I blink you know I, I feel the, oh the, the, the you know, bum, 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 bum of my heart going and uh, we're talking sitting down talking to Dave Gibbons and um, Ming just jumps in there and is like I have a standard question I ask everybody and I'm going like oh man this is not going to end well and um, he says if you weren't an artist what would you be doing and um, Dave Gibbons says that well I I used to help my parents run a, um, a retirement home for people, you know, they, their parents or their, their children put them in uh, these homes and we would bathe them and, you know, some, there was this one guy who told me to, you know, wash his dick and stuff like that. And it was like all sorts of stuff. And, and he had uh, to do it. And he had to do it. And, um, of course, Brian Johnson gets in on the act and he's like, so you were just lathering up some dude's wiener. Yeah, and, it's awesome. Yeah, and later on he drew that wiener into yeah. a copy of, into the Watchmen. Yeah. So like, it all worked out. So it all worked out. It That's all worked amazing. out. I'm sure that dude's wiener was bright and blue as well. So. I, be I believe that wiener. Like that drawing, I believe it. <laughs> I, I did. That, was a, that, that wiener has yeah. weight. Yeah. I was I was jealous of that wiener. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blue. Yeah, like blue. yeah, well, absolutely. I was more jealous of the size, but really? Um, well, yeah. I mean, I'm jealous of most. I'm Asian. Oh so. dear God! No. <laughs> See, again, this is not going to end well. So we're leading into that. Yes. Yeah, good man. Uh, but I, I, I've seen the following your book describe. Uh, it was uh, somewhere I, I read. It was like Gladiator meets Blade Runner, and I also yeah. wanted to throw in the Abyss plus yeah. the Running Man. Plus, plus, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's like really like it's it's. I mean, I think the most precise way to describe it is it's kind of like the Hunger Games on steroids. And actually, if I may, I yeah, have, you you have I, a, I, I do. Well, you got your own. Yeah, I got it's dodgeball meets Armageddon meets Book of Eli. That's, <laughs> oh, wow. so I, I, mean, I dug deep, and I dug well. So right I mean, that to me it was there were these guys who, they're, I mean, they're they're a team. They're they're. Basically drillers, right? Yeah, so I'm like Armageddon right there, right? 
but post right, they're, they're really leather necks or not leather necks rough necks rough necks yeah, yeah, um, um, you know a bunch of uh, and in my mind's eye I kept going back to um, uh, Gary oh my god I, I'm blanking on his name um, my man my man Gary uh, yeah that, that guy that, that one from what uh, uh, from Book of Eli uh, Gary oh uh, uh, you got me. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, no one saw a book of you. I, I, I saw it and I loved it. I mean, <laughs> I, I I actually did. I I, but only because like I I just think that, I think that genre is really well served in like Australia. Yeah. And there's like all those great like because it's like that desert there is just yeah. amazing to shoot in. Um, but but it was nice to see it was nice to see something that was that that was uh, that without being shot in the middle of the the Australian desert. True, but for me it was like oh my god it's. He's blind. I yeah. mean, again, but like, did oh, you ever like Z- Zatachi, Zatachi, the, the the blind swordsman, the Japanese uh, the Japanese TV show? There's a no. there's an amazing show about a blind swordsman, which is yeah, Zatachi, sort of, yeah, 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 Zatachi, yeah. you know, yeah, it, right? yeah, 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 and not me, yeah. unfortunately. No, I, I was I was sort of, and there, it reminded it reminded me at times though of that Ricker Hauer movie where he's the blind swordsman. Did you ever do you remember that? That, that I didn't see. Um, do you, yes, do you I do remember Mike? that movie. Yeah. Um, blind swordsman. He's like a blind ninja. I do remember that. It wasn't Gary Coleman. Damn. <laughs> Gary, not Gary Coleman, not Gary Busey. No. Yeah. Another Gary. This, um, um, You'll find it. I will. I'll pull it out. We can edit this part out. No, we can't. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't edit anything. <laughs> That's what makes it funny. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really horrible because I can see his face right now. Um, but, um, and for uh, Dodgeball, I mean, they're training for this. The reconciliation. Basic, the reconciliation, which is essentially... Deadly dodgeball or rollerball. A rollerball, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's the idea is is that is that they find a big mine de- mining deposit um, called Liberty Ore. It's sort of this radioactive mm-hmm. element that we invented that's that's uh, on the moon, which sort of leads to the the whole wrap up the up at the end of the series that kind of culminates in something later. Yeah, this is a half hand- kryptonite, half uranium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and um, it's a smaller company called Hanson Lunar Engineering. Yeah, so they're uh, a small company. Uh, Finds like the biggest the ore deposit load. ever, the mother load, and and through trickery and chicanery, uh, uh, Max Silcor, the the bad guy of the book, his corporation challenges them in the uh, or, or the they, they 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 are going to get their percentage and do a backroom deal to like just get it to just get the claim and yeah. give the Hanson company a small percentage. And he so pisses off the daughter of of, of Eric Hansen, the guy who's the mining head that uh, she challenges them to a reconciliation in the arena. So it's basically like you know these like. Uh, minor league players going up against like you know the Yankees. Yeah. And Gary uh, Oldman, I'm sorry. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull, Mike. Ah. It would uh, it would be like us going against our rivals, uh, Comic Crypt down the street, <laughs> and um, what, over and, yeah, um, yeah. over I don't know like a Bragging straight rights, yeah. like a straight issue of uh, you know of uh, like Howard Omac number duck. one or Howard the Duck number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, winner take all, loser die. You know, losers. Well, actually, it'd be more a little. The stakes would be a little bit more like uh, Batman. I don't know. Uh, like a trove of, yeah, like a trove of uh, Hulk 181s or okay, something sure. that we're fighting over. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a tro- and of course we would kick their asses. Well, well. I'm, you know, I'm glad you guys both like the book. I mean, you know, it's it's always a goal to try. I, I wanted to put a fresh spin on a, on a, a, well, a well-tread trope. And, uh, and it, 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 I think most of you got there. I mean, it was our first comic. It was 96 pages. So, uh, uh, you know, but we, I kind of peppered it. I always liked those drawings of uh, the Baxter building inside the Fantastic Four. Oh, course, so I, yeah. so I put cutaways. little cutaways and stuff yeah. in it to sort of show like all the tech and stuff. Yeah, that, that was pretty, yeah, it was like a throwback. Yeah. And it felt really cool. It's like, yeah, you've got these, yeah. these buildings. I mean, it, it, they look like design, you know, like, hey, touch here and, yeah. uh, and this will, something bad will yeah, happen or something good will happen. Well, actually, or touch danger here. Danger room or, yeah. Touch here and you can spin it. And I was like, wow. This, this is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It almost feels like, you know, yeah. like a hologram. Well, it's, you know, it's basically making a, a movie on a, on, a, on a significantly lower budget. And, sure. And, no, and, you know, and it's a situation where nobody could really say no to us. Then Emery, uh, uh, his sister lives in a building with Neil Adams, and Emery badgered Neil Adams for a couple of months for us to come in, and then Neil liked us. Which yeah, kind of guided you, right? It's, he guided us. He was our executive editor. He read the script and and gave us notes and and designed all the characters and 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 uh, and then did our cover for us. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a pretty you know I'm seeing cover. Yeah, it's it, he said it was the most interesting cover he'd done that year. So um, nice. So that was a that was high praise too. But but uh, 
you know, we want to do a second one, uh, but you know, I've been busy acting and doing other writing. So. Just you know, you know, here, you know, ex <laughs> excuses. Yeah. Excuses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, we we've met Neil. If you know anything about Neil, he's uh, he's blunt. Mm. Oh my God. Honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he doesn't I, like anything you're doing. He'll tell you. And he and he did. I heard he he had he was a little bit involved in editing. I mean, to one point where I guess he cut out like 40 pages. Yeah, he brought he he said he I brought him the script and handed it to him and I came back a week later and it was like it was half the it was like this thick and he, he he brought it in and it had lines through everything and he he dropped it on the table so it made a really loud yeah. noise. Like clearly he'd spent time on it. But you know, I'm I, I'm from the Alan Moore school of, of writing. I want to make sure that all the details are there. Right, and so. you get so. paid by the the word. No, so I, yes, I get paid, but just like Paul. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he basically told us like, dude, simplify. It. Yeah, he he simplify. said he said simplify it and 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 you know take out these elements and you know it's cowboys in space. So just you know have your cowboys do their thing and have them fight the bad guys and and it'll all it'll all wash really well. You don't have to do, you don't have to be clever. Basically, and so I, it was good. It was good advice. That yeah, and for the most part, you know, yeah, you do you do well listening to the to the Neil Adams. To the guy, he's, yeah. he's done a thing or two, or three, or, or four, <laughs> yeah, or three. I found out he won us. He won an award for stage design. There was a in the seventies. There was a there was a, a science fiction musical, uh, the name of which I can't remember right now. But he won like an he designed the stage and he won an award. For, no idea. He won like an Obi or something for for his stage. No design. idea. Right, the and band is well rounded. He's, he's done. I mean, he's helped design like uh, comic book uh, amusement park rides, and I mean, he's done all sorts of interesting stuff. Yeah. You know, the Nasen X B I think is his, and he really? does a lot of animation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, yeah. Neil Adams. Yeah. No, he's he's and he's and he sort of was. I I get. I think from what I understand, one of the first guys to do motion comics. Am I right about that, or is that not? Uh, uh, I would believe that. I don't. I I wouldn't dispute that. Yeah. It sounds no. like something that he would have done. Yeah. I bet good money on that. Yeah. Although yeah. I think that uh, Marvel has the corner on on the first motion. Oh, like uh, okay. Yeah, I, the Submariner. I, oh, the and, you know, the old like cartoons you mean? Yeah. The the uh, okay yeah. Um, uh, but your hero's name is uh, Sean Hexham. Yeah, uh, he's got a violent past. Try, uh, now he just wants to drill, but he's kind of dragged back. Uh, you know, once you're once, once you're out, they, dr they draw you back. They draw in. you back. And well, you know, my my uh, my cousin was in uh, Iraq uh, uh, around the time of the Battle of Fallujah. And he's in the National Guard. Yeah. And um, a couple, he was talking to me about this on the phone. A couple of his friends came back, and they had they had pretty severe PTSD. Right. And I wanted to write a character who who had so much loss in his life. He he, he uh, you know he's seen his son and his wife. Yeah, murder, killed in front of him. Killed in front of him, and and he, he, he you know uh, I wanted the guy I write a guy who was like on his last rope, um, and at, at the furthest reaches of where he could get to to escape, uh, so he could be in complete solitude. And, yeah, and, and he just, it just, it just you can't you you know the no man is an island theme is a wonderful theme to play with. So. Yeah. And uh, and he he gets back in it, but uh, you know you'll have to read that part. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, you threw some cool tech into the book too. Um, uh, I had read the same article you did, and uh, I think uh, about the nano space elevators. Sure, yeah. Where, um, you know, at, at its simplest, uh, you know, they throw up a they throw up a string into space. And yeah. They, they carry cargo up and down that. Yeah, they throw up um, a satellite. They'll drop it. The idea is that they'll get around to it eventually. Isaac Asimov sort of popularized the idea, and he said once people stop laughing, they'll actually build it. Right. But it'll drop a big ribbon from space, and then that tethers to something on the planet, and then you just send things up and down the ribbon. You don't yeah. have to. Right, and it orbits they call at it the, the space elevator. And space yeah, elevator. Yeah, orbits at the yeah. same time to carry cargo. One day, people perhaps. Well, it makes an interesting choke point for for cargo. I mean, if your energy's on the moon, it, it, it makes for an interesting, like, the, the storm the castle moment of, of that would be a lot of fun to, mm. to make. So, uh, yeah. that's kind of the idea, anyway. Yeah. I don't um, want to foreshadow anything. But. No. But, uh, you know, book, book came out, and uh, you got some pretty positive reviews. Uh, oh, yeah. Any Cool News wrote you up a pretty glowing review. Yeah. Uh, a website called uh, Pop Culture Zoom. Uh, also, throw them out there. You can, you can, you can read those. Yeah, and, no, uh, the, the Any Cool News said that they loved the book, and that the characters were great. The writing was good, and it was like it happened. To, one of, that guy came up to us. The superhero is his. Is his I think name? so. Yeah. Uh, he came up to us at the uh, at Comic Con and kind of snuck me his card and grabbed the book. And we didn't think we'd ever hear from him yeah. again. And then like two weeks later, here's this amazing review. And so, yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. All of a sudden. That's awesome. Uh, well, um, your uh, your your decision to go 96 pages mm. rather than you know standard. Uh, comic, yes, yeah, twenty-two or or larger. Yeah. Uh, was there anything behind there, or you just had the whole story? You just needed more 
you know, more I, pages, more I think room. I think the only thing that I talked Emery into was going past seventy two. Like, I okay. mean, I, I, is that the other? Is it would that would it have been the other number? Or it's um, it's it's an increments of I can't remember what's an increment. It's increments so of. weird. It's it's like twenty two. You can do thirty two. Uh huh. Um, but it was I was gonna go for seventy something, and then I realized I needed more space. Yeah. And um, I begged him for it, and he found the money. So cool. Um, you know, and and you know, still to this day, it's it's been an out of pocket experience for all of us. We we put it's a labor <laughs> for of, most people. A labor you know, of love. You know? Most people get you know sponsorship and dollars from above. Or, yeah. Uh, um, I get. Um, yeah, I don't. There was no Kickstarter back then. No, no. But my, my favorite thing that the In a Cool News guy wrote is he said, "Get your hands on this book before Hollywood gets a hold of it and inevitably fucks it up." Which is uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's a, it's a good comic book. You can go to uh, www.thereconcilers.com. Oh, nice. And, okay, uh, cool. And we have a nice little website up there, and um, we're also on eBay. So. Yeah, you can you can buy it there as well. There's and a, actually, you guys there. were very generous. There's there's a store here called uh, Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. Yes, where you can get copies of yes, it. Um, you can get copies of it now. Yes, if you actually come in here, uh, it's right next to DMC's book. Yes. Or DMC's book is next to Rick and Silent. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I got to get that run DMC book. It's it's good luck. So yeah. Gotta, yeah, I, well, you've bought half the store. I know already. I did. You <laughs> literally <laughs> came in for you up there. I want a good horror one though. You gotta, you gotta recommend something good to me. Excellent. Someone. Yeah, I will. Did you read Fangoria magazine? No, I was kid? never really a big Fango fan. Uh huh. Right on. What was your, Although, what was your go-to book? Did you have a go-to magazine for monster stuff no, or not? No, not really. No, no. They're very, very few. Uh, every once in a while, some famous monsters. Uh huh. Sure. Um, Fango, not so much. Huh. Starlog. Every once in a while. Star. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, honestly, yeah that's I, right. Mike's a big Star Trek fan. Okay, so well, no, no, no. I wasn't back in the day. I was, oh, okay. I was telling Eric, I'm, I was never huge into the sword and sorcery kind of thing. Right, it was sci-fi. It's, uh, yeah, but sci-fi was not my wheelhouse either. You know, I, I read uh, Asimov. I read uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Right. Uh, I enjoyed them, but there was no one, you know, I, I mean, of course, everyone knows the, you know, the robotics, Asimov. And, mm -hmm. and, sure. Uh, Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Love Bradbury, but you know, um, I didn't get into horror like mm -hmm. as my my wow. I love horror until Stephen King. Right. Mm. I mean, I loved. There was one summer when we watched nothing but horror movies, like The Prophecy with Talia Shire. Wow. Um, Phantasm. Sure. Uh, Silent Scream. It was like one of the the prototypes of the slasher. Really. Oh my god. Oh you, wow. And. The the glory that was Silent Scream is that it had um, the the girl that uh, was psychotic for uh, Billy Crystal and Soap. Wow. And topless. It was. Yeah, oh my oh, goodness <laughs> gracious! Like I'm gonna check this and, out. <laughs> and it had uh, Avon De Carlo and Avery Schreiber. Wow. In there. Remember wow. Avery Schreiber? Sure, from sure. From the Doritos commercial? Sure, sure. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah, wow, yeah. you're going wow. way back. I'm, no, I, he played a cop, and it's like. So weird, <laughs> yeah. And um, of course, Amityville Horror. And, sure, you know, we got all of those. That like, movie freaked me out. Uh, me too. It really freaked me like, out. I love this movie. Yeah, it was I, uh, 80, 1980. And I read the Amityville Horror. My father thought it was like really important that I, I cultivate reading as a love. Okay. He's like, you know, you, you dig reading. Mine too. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So yeah. he set me up with a uh, charge account at our local bookstore. Oh, you just get whatever you want. Yeah. Wow. Pretty much. Okay. That's but within great. reason. Right, right. So, yeah. That's amazing. And I'd go in there, I'd sign my name, and I had, you know, I could get books. Huh. But I had to read them. Oh, right on. And right my on. father would be like, you read that book? It cost me eight bucks. All right, what's right. it about? Quick. Yeah, right uh, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sketch. But um, I, I became such a huge Stephen King fan that I don't know if you remember, but he was writing as Richard Bachman. Sure. Well, that was. Did he do the Dark, dark Tower stuff under that name? No. No. Well, who did? What did he do? Dark, the Dark Tower stuff under? What it was, was under Stephen King. St well, that was yes. Stephen King. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so he was. So, which books did he write as Richard Bachman? It was uh, Road Rage. Uh huh. Uh, the Long Walk. Sure. Uh, long Walk. Uh, not that pupil. It was um, Long Walk, Road Rage. Um, damn, I'm, there are two others that he did, and Thinner. Oh wow! Thinner was Richard Bachman. I I walked in, and uh, I saw it. I saw a. This is back in the day when they would actually do posters uh -huh. to put in the windows. Right. I'm like, oh my god! It says, it says um, like, from the mind that brought you uh, the long walk. What, what was the other one? Oh damn it! Um, it wasn't like Langoliers uh, or something like that, walk. was it? 
No, you, that was one of his uh, short stories. Oh, uh, okay, right on. And everyone's going to be like bitch, bitching him. Uh, long Walk, Road Rage. Oh, crap, it was... Uh, there was something like as, as a student, mm -hmm. the kid was. Uh, it, it was like early before Columbine. Okay. This kid went in and started shooting up this school. Huh. So I mean, all you people out there, who want to blame somebody. Blame Stephen King. Right. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll just blame. Yeah. yeah what a scapegoat. Yeah. Exactly. It's the ultimate scapegoat. Stephen King. Yeah, exactly. Just blame Stephen, him for Stephen everything. Stephen King. Oh my God. Don't um, blame Stephen King. And then there was yeah. I know. Gossip National Treasure. Um. But uh, I, I'm like, wow, that sounds like. And I'm like reading the synopsis. Uh -huh. like, sounds like something Stephen King had written. Yeah, sure. little did you know. Yeah, and, and then it's like, no, it, the story broke. Later oh, it did. It's like, I was right. Wow. And I'm like, damn, yeah, damn, I'm good. We didn't wow. have a lot of, you know, most of the the horror writers were like, thrown as paperbacks. Right. That's they they didn't get a hardcover. They got paperbacks, and that's it. Right. So I was like, oh man, that sucks. And Stephen King did start getting hardcovers. Yeah. Was really cool. Right around the same age, I, I read Cujo. That freaked me out. The Stand freaked yes, me out. The Stand. Like, the was Stand. Amazing. The Stand in particular. And recently, I've, I've been I've been trying to crack the Dark Tower books, and I and I really think you need to fight your way through the first one to get you, to the, the you other need, stuff. You, you know? need to fight your way through the, uh, yeah. through the first three. Really? Yeah. For me, it was the first three. Because I've started it like three times, and it's beautiful, and I love the world, um, but it's a completely different language, and I right. think it takes time to learn it. You if know? you need to, if you need like something to just ease you in. Mm -hmm. Read Eyes of the Dragon first, and then okay. it'll help you walk right through. I'll write it. that down. Eyes okay. of the Dragon. What is that? A, is that a prequel or something? No, or the, it's actually Stephen King just writing a standalone yeah, it's novel. A, it's something, but it, it has characters that you'll recognize. Great. So I'll do that. Yeah. Cool. Eyes of the Dragon. Then you can just go ahead and be like, Oh my God, this is. It's it's sort of a precursor to. What was it in particular about his writing that that really got you woke you up? Um, Mainly that he, um, his descriptions mm -hmm. were so spot on, mm -hmm. and you know they were. Uh, I think it was in uh, the body, which became mm -hmm. uh, stand, stand by, by me. me. Yeah, but he said, um, "Here we are going out looking for this kid who was never going to throw up um, or chuck up um, five pounds of candy on November 1st. And it's like, oh wow, yeah. that's that's very poetic yeah. for you know saying that he OD'd on. Halloween candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, he, he walked around stuff. And the fact that he, and this was a major revelation to me, mm. he would actually um, reference like brand names. And it's a very small distinction. But nobody ever does that. Right. But yeah, he does. puts you in right. the real world. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He makes it relatable to you. Right on. Like, uh, oh, so anyway, I'm, I'm sitting there with my, you know, my Brillo pad scrubbing down these. Uh huh, uh huh. Like, like, wow. Oh, some I use other, pillow pads too. I do. And, but other people are like, um, you know, steel wool. I'm scrubbing it with steel wool. They don't want to get, you know. They don't want to get sued. Sued, yeah. <laughs> but no, no one's going to sue you for that because no. right. basically yeah. you're doing advertising right. for them. So. Right on. Right on. You know, it's. I think Walking Dead does the same thing too. I think it's the, I, you, not with, not with you know, objects and, and stuff, but with the sort of human relationships and stuff you can relate to. Like, that's exactly right. That's the, and, and have you read Stephen King's book on writing? Did you ever read oh, that? Oh, sure. Oh, God, it just changed my life. I, I know. just, it, it, the fact that he said, I don't plot. Here's the thing. Excited me so much. I mean, Man. structurally he probably does, it, some mm -hmm. of it probably happens automatically. Mm -hmm. But it completely freed me up as a writer. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to hew to some... Yes, you can outline, mm -hmm. but you don't have to plot. I think that's really cool. But um, did you hear that he said that he was drunk and high when he wrote it? And he's like, I don't even remember. My <laughs> <laughs> he's like, and, just... and he's like, it's total bullshit. <laughs> you don't have to... You, you, uh, everyone has to write every day. He's like, there are people who... And he did say that. He's like, I, a guy like... Um, uh, oh, God. Um guy who wrote uh, Red Dragon. And oh, yeah, yeah. The, the Thomas yeah, Harris. The, yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. like, Thomas Harris writes one book every, like, six years. He's like, what is he doing with all the rest of his time? And for me, I he's a utility guy. Yeah. He's he's more of a, um, he's not an artist. They're, for me, I he's a craftsman. Uh -huh. He's a words craftsman. And uh, he writes these books, and they're not formulaic at all. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. I, I used to like Dean Koontz. I, mm. And uh, I mean, I still respect the man as an author. He's written four billion books, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but he's very formulaic. Mm. It's very A, B, and then final um, 
final thoughts. Right on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's like, oh my god, that's a little too pat. Right on. <laughs> I, read, I read Lightning, I read Watchers, and then I read, uh, I think it was uh, Cold Fire. Uh huh. Sure. Sure. And I'm like these are all the same book, mm. uh, except the. You know the characters are plugged in a little bit differently. Didn't he do a, a Frankenstein graphic he novel? Did. Like, How was that? I don't know. Uh, I stopped reading. Yeah, oh. right on. Yeah. A couple of friends of mine are adapting or were adapting something for him, and they said he's a really interesting dude. I'm and sure he is, and, but he he comes from that Borderlands um, mm -hmm. style of writing, and we uh, actually one of my favorite writers. And you might want to write this name down. Okay. F. Paul Wilson. I've, we've had him on. Uh, I saw comics. Yeah, really? he wrote the he wrote the keep. He wrote the keep. Oh wow. And he wrote, um, actually, the Repairman Jack novels. I don't know those novels at all. Uh, his first one is called The Tomb. Okay. He hates that name because everybody was calling There's no tomb in it. So. Uh. <laughs> um, but it's it's under the thing. Um, and that's name. a character, Repairman Jack? Repairman yeah. Jack, yeah. Okay, He's cool. awesome. Uh, he came back, he came out in like 1984. And I, that was, I have moved many times in my life. And uh, I've destroyed and lost and just about every possession I own. Right. His book was one of the only things I kept with me. Right on. For like 30 years. You know, I, next next time I come by the shop, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it uh, maybe in a couple months. Like I'll come back or something. And, and um, I got, I, I put aside for you guys a, a, a stack of my comics that, I, that, are the, that are that for me. Because, like, obviously I have my whole comics collection mm -hmm. from when I was a kid, and my mom never threw my Star Wars guys away. And, oh, you know, good. Like, you had a, you like, had a cool thank mom. You, mom. Yeah. And, oh, my, and my $6 million man and Oscar Goldman. Oh! Uh, the, the real ones, the yeah. tall ones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a great mom. Yeah, he's got an exploding briefcase. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the 40 year old version movie was disturbingly yeah. close to yeah, home yeah, yeah, for yeah, about yeah. five minutes. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, but this, this one stack has followed me all the way from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota nice. to New York and they're all, the covers are off, the, the cover's missing, there's pages missing, but I pull them out and it's like I'm immediately transported. It, and it's these specific things, it's like, uh, uh, there's a, there's a, a Fantastic Four book with, um, with uh, some villains in it called Six from Sirius, uh, is it Six from Sirius or Six from, they're like sort of these mutant... They're, no, they're, the Salem Seven. The Salem Seven. Yeah, yeah. that's it. They're, they're Agatha Harkness has kidnapped yeah. a kid or something, and and, yeah, and Nicholas. Well, it's uh, his his name is Nicholas uh, Scratch. Scratch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got like that one has followed me around ever since it came out. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll bring him next time. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh my anything. God. Yeah. Salem. Do you I, I was like, these guys should be mutants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. yeah. Do you uh, do you remember the origin of your comic book fandom? Um, he it, just told us. Like, well, yeah, I, I guess mean, that it was. Exactly. Is, I mean, there was a there was a shop. Uh, I lived in a town of sixty five hundred people, and there was a barber down the street, and he had a stack of comics, and you could buy, uh, you could buy four for a dollar, and then he'd buy them back from you for like ten cents each or five cents each. Yeah, and they all had their cover taken off. Yeah, the, all the covers were gone, and yeah, but and they had those though. fishing ads in the back. Sure. <laughs> you oh, yeah. could buy like three fishing rods and four hundred <laughs> lures for nineteen dollars and yeah. fifty cents. And it, yeah, no, it just, uh, it just, it, it, you know, I was a big reader too. I was more into sort of Lord of the Rings and stuff. Gotcha. Uh, I'd skip the songs, um, but uh, but and my dad just like was always throwing Kurt Vonnegut in my hands and stuff, and like he, you know, and then, and then the comic books just seemed a natural fit. Awesome, you know? yeah. So uh, yeah, favorite titles, favorite favorite superheroes. From favorite? as a kid, yeah, um, I had uh, I liked the Creeper. I liked uh, the Ditko Creeper a lot. Yeah. Uh, I liked Dead Man a lot. I liked. Um, I liked. Oh, I loved um, the All Star Squadron. Yes, weren't yes. those good? Were like fantastic. the the World War Two era ones I'm where they were like. I'm a fan of Earth Two. Yeah, me too. Earth Two, that for me was like, oh, this is this is real. Like, yeah. Like uh, the All Star comics. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Fifty eight on. Sure, totally. And, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Sandman and and you get Hawkman and sure, the the. Yeah. the uh, and I can't remember Doctor Midnight, Doctor Mid, oh, Star Spangled Kid. Wow! <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And what was the Star Spangled Kid's stripey? Stripes? Stripe? Stri uh, stripey. No, stripey right. was stripey. his name. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible name for a sidekick. I know. The sidekick was bigger than him. He was an adult. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> they kind of threw the yeah. trope on it too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, so. It was a little odd. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fun. So, are you reading anything currently? Or do you still? I mean, do you still go to the stores? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean. Uh, God, I feel like I should be talking to you. I have so many questions for you guys. Uh, no, uh, right now, I love I love what Bill Willingham is doing with Fables and sort of okay, in, yeah. in terms of a story writ large. I like that. Um, I picked up the Wendy and Richard Peeney books here, the Elfquest yeah, books. Quest. That's um, 
But it, in terms of the new stuff that's going on, I liked The Boys a lot. It got a little mm -hmm. bit bloody and sexy for me after a while. Okay. It was like yeah. a little bit, okay, they're going to fucking kill joyous, somebody. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Yeah, like I mentioned, Garth Ennis, you know, what, this, you, know you know what you're getting into. Yeah, you know, what you, you know what you're getting into. But like, you know, I'll, I'll read anything that Warren Ellis puts out. I okay. liked, I, I, I'm waiting. I don't know if Planetary is over or not, but I'm waiting for another issue of that to come I'm out. I'm pretty sure Planetary is over. Is it, is it over, over, for good, yeah. for good? I didn't expect the fourth one to even happen. And then all of a sudden it was there. And then, yeah. and then, it, was, and then it was over, so. I like his stuff a lot. Oh yeah, so, Ellis yeah. is uh, he's pretty revolutionary. Yeah, um, and then I'm just like learning more. I'm learning more artists and more stuff now. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Grant Morrison. I'm really interested in what the 52 thing is that he's that he's doing. His multiversity. You mean? Yeah, the multiversity thing. I, he's, I wanna. Um, he's um, wacky. Yeah, it's good. I think um, that's the word for him. I, uh, I give you a copy of uh, Multiversity Ultra Comics. Yeah, and uh, what you're, you're picking up. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll like that. It's. Right I, I was trying to describe. I don't know if you read it. Um, I it's did. It's list. very. It's it's very. It's trippy. ambitious, right? It's, it's it, he's he's nothing if not ambitious. For right. me, he leaves a lot of his readers in the dust because he's like, you should be understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but I'm not. Right. I'm, because we're not on the same wavelength. Right. And well, you would if you were on mushrooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it does feel like that. It does feel like I'm, yeah. I'm tripping, but it does break the fourth wall, which I thought was kind of constantly. Cool. And, He's yes. constantly breaking the fourth yeah. wall with this this uh, well, series. He did that on Animal Man. That was that famous issue yeah. of Animal Man, right? Yeah, where he you, does it in everything. It's, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, even Final Crisis, like you, I'm looking at you. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, really. there, there, there are points of the comics telling you what what to do and what not to do. Like, it's literally yelling at you. And it's like, well, what's going on here? Like, yeah, stop, stop yelling. It's like, You're like, Dad. Yeah, stop. but I was like, is my comic book talking to me? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Wow. It's it's uh, it's a great... It'd be really cool if it had my name in there. You know? Sure. Oh, well, that's, I'm like, sure that's coming. Yeah, yeah eventually. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what are, what are your favorites right now? I mean, do you have anything... Uh, I, uh, I suggested a couple of... You. Uh, I'm reading a lot of Hawkeye. Like, people are sick of me talking about Hawkeye, but uh -huh. the Marvel now, now Hawkeye. I don't know... Uh, there's just little little bits and pieces that really I can really relate to for, for some reason. Uh -huh. And then yeah, and then I want to be Clint Barton, and, you know, in real life too. He wants to be a carny. Really? And um, yeah. Well, yeah, I want to. Yeah, you know, I want to be a, an Avenger. Like uh, 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 I want to have like you know, I, I want to date three women at the same time. Like uh, all kinds of weird. I wanted to be the Vision for a long time. The Vision. Was <laughs> the, my, I, I think Mike I, does too, right? Did you no, like the vision? No. I, I was a Wonder Man fan. Oh, Wonder Man. Okay. Oh, I love Wonder Man. Yeah. His story is so interesting. I know. They never did anything with him. No, they, they, should, have. they should have. Yeah. They, they totally screwed that pooch. So, yeah. But for me, it was just like, you know, this, here's this guy who's the next best thing to Superman. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of, and he doesn't, they say he's cowardly, but he's not. He's right. still in the thick of things. Uh -huh. He's still mixing it up. Sure. Maybe he's a little afraid, but. Who wouldn't be? Right. You're going up against like Count Nefaria and Graviton. Sh Graviton. Yeah. Oh, Graviton was the greatest supervillain. I'm telling you. Oh man, he was evil. I'm telling. I think he's the reason I had a goatee for a long time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I wanted to look like either 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 like a Green Arrow or a Graviton. Graviton okay. was a great. He was, but he he was like an hippo rapist. Was he really? Like, I didn't like, know. That. Well, he was going after that. You know this other dude's wife. I, uh, that's right. And he's just like really inappropriate and creepy. Yeah, and yeah, it's just like, yeah. Dude, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, and he was horrible. Like, I, mean, I mean, I know you're a super villain and all, but have a little decorum. Yeah, just a little bit. There's rules. Yeah, there, there <laughs> should be, right? <laughs> yeah, you're not Doctor Light for Christ. Yeah, sakes. exactly. No, oh, there's rules. You creepy bastard. There's rules. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I loved it. But um, yeah, I mean, I I really dug that. Thing. And it goes to this, Ming. Yes. When, when you think about it, like there's the Vision and the Scarlet Witch. There is, yes. And it was always um, coming soon to soon to theaters. Of you. course, but you, you've got this. It's it's sort of like a woman marrying a dildo. A little bit, <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. marrying okay, a so machine. She, yeah, 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 yeah. Machine with personality. And she can and she can warp reality, but he's the least real of, exactly. of all the people, so, which is a very interesting. Yeah, but she fell in love with him because of his, you know, the man inside. So it yeah. was, which was Wonder Man, right. to be honest with you. Yeah, it is. It was, it it's was a, his it's brain patterns. It's a bit like a, it's, it's got a little 70s threesome kind yeah. of thing going on, it's, except it, they're all in each other's heads. Yeah, you know? it's, it's almost like, yeah, like Three's Company. Yeah, it's exactly. like, all you need is one really, really bad innuendo and Don Knotts. Yeah, and yeah you need Don Knotts. And Funky Flashman. Yeah, exactly. And things, <laughs> and things go all sorts of haywire. Oh, of course, yeah. All right. sorts um, of haywire. You smell of pickles. 
Yeah. No one will get that, but that's, that was from the Ropers, actually. It was Jeffrey Tambor's greatest line. Really? The smell of pickles. He said it to uh, John Ritter. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> a pickle broken, and, and he cleaned it up. So. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's I got to work with one. John Ritter once. I did a movie with oh, John Ritter. Yeah. Uh, you which, know which one? A couple actually, years before he died. I actually cried when he passed away. I did, too. And yeah. I was like, it oh. really, but he was the nicest man I think I've ever met. And I'm, I'm prone to hyperbole sometimes, but I actually, uh, you know... Um, you guys, are among, the, you guys are among join, the top ten. Join the club, my friend. Oh, like that. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, I say I love everybody. But no, in terms of people in the business who are decent and who have a mind and who are kind and stuff like that, like him and I talked about Laurel and Hardy all day. We were on set. Oh, and I told him something he didn't know. I mean, there was no internet to check. Then. Yeah. I told him something he didn't know. He didn't. He there was nothing. I did this, and he said, what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. I was like, no. Um, and, and, but he, he uh, didn't, like Laurel and Hardy, there were four or five films that they did uh, that they did in German. Uh, or, and French and Spanish, and they would put up blackboards uh, uh, off screen, and so they would do their comedy routines were often silent, so those would be cut into their mm -hmm. speaking scenes, and they'd be speaking, you know, Ich Brecke and Bisschen Deutsch and yeah. Pigeon German. Oh, cool! Written phonetically on the yeah. board, so there are these there are these Laurel and Hardy films where they're doing the film, but it's a different movie in Spain than it is here because the scenes are all them really speaking Spanish, right. not oh, subtitles. Wow. Like changes everything. And he's right? like, "That's not true. That didn't happen." And then I sent him the book, and he sent me sent me back one of my prized possessions. He sent me back a, a picture of him on a baseball card as John Groin Ritter, <laughs> and and on the back it's got his stats, which are terrible. You know, right. And he's like yelling at an umpire during a celebrity softball oh, game or something. Awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty right. cool. He's like batting one thirty. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, totally, totally. Well, he's John Ritter. He can bat whatever the hell he yeah, wants. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh but, but I mean, I, I, like, we did, like, pretend physical comedy together, and he was a big oh. fan of uh, Confederacy of Dunces. He was a big fan of that book. Oh, wow, okay. And somebody had stolen it from him. Billy Bob Thornton had gave, given him a copy, and somebody had stolen it from John's trailer, and I had a copy with me. I just gave it to him. Wait a minute, I gave him my copy of what Confederacy you and Dunces. What did you... It was a movie called uh, Montana, was the name of the movie. Okay, I'm not, it's not Bad Santa, is it? No, yeah, I no, wish. No, no, no. Oh, that, that was awesome. a funny oh, movie. Was, I love that I movie. So that movie kind of captures all of my feelings about the commercialization of Christmas. Like, it's just, fuck. No, <laughs> it just captures every, how I feel about retail. <laughs> really? So, yeah. yeah, you're in the midst of it. So. <laughs> you're in yeah. the midst of it, my friend. Because people come up, you know, you're trying to eat your lunch or something. Yeah. Hey, can we get a picture? I've got my cheeks are puffed down. Sure. And you want to say, well, I fuck a brain. So how long did it take you to get bitter? <laughs> years. Yeah. Many years. Yeah, Mike's not bitter yet. I am active. Mike's not no, bitter. Mike's not Brian Johnson. Answer. Mike's not Brian Johnson bitter. Either. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Well, Brian's working on me. I would hate to get He's on Brian's to bad side. Oh, join the club. No. Yeah. <laughs> Your goal... Rather than Actually, that, yeah. should be to get on Brian's good side. Right on. That's, you know, that's tough, man. You can, that's tough. But he's good people. That's tough. You know, he's. I can tell. He's you like know, a. He's, he's, no, I, I don't. Yeah, I he's don't, not here yet. He's, he's coming. He's on his way. Oh, is, right he on. On. Yeah, is he good? All right. Oh, there he is. Is that? Is he? Oh, hey, here he is. There he is. In the in the house. Brian Johnson, everybody. Hey, Brian Johnson. It's good to see you. In the house. How could you sink so low so quick? I don't know. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Like, uh, yeah. All right. Point is, selling my soul. Are you gonna sit down with us? Point. Point taken. Oh, speaking of the biggest fucking hypocrite in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Johnson, everybody. Brian Johnson. What, what, what hypocrisy did I? Mean? <laughs> what hypocrisy haven't you thrown out there? We'll, we'll talk about. Grab your chair. Well, no, I'm actually, not, he can I'm have this one because I actually I'm do. I'm not in fuzzy slippers and booty shorts. Am no, I? no, you're not. You're, you're not in fuzzy slippers. No, and but you, you lied to Walt, so that's that's all right. Uh, that's good. All right. so, I'll define what I lied about. Yeah, you lied about a lot of stuff. You lied. You liar. How long have you guys been friends? It's been like a long time. Right? Uh, you think that's friendship? Oh my god! Uh, I've known Mike for 15 years. I've known Brian for almost 18. 20, almost 20 now. Really? Brian and Will for almost 20. That's now. amazing. I was saying, I was saying uh, that you guys, that that one episode next season, you guys should get the guy from uh, some kind of monster here to do. Oh yeah, just inter yeah, like for an you intervention, guys. Yeah. relationship oh. counseling. Or how about just that guy from Monster? Um, oh, Charlie Theron. Charlie yeah. Theron. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be awesome. um, also, since you asked, uh, uh, this week, everybody, I'm reading uh, Darth Vader number three, which oh, cool. uh, I also recommend you. Um, I am so also Mar reading Darth Vader. Number uh, Marvel, Marvel's doing the Star Wars book. They got the rights back, you know, with the whole Disney thing. So they they've redone the uh, Star Wars book. So there's a Star Wars standalone comic. There's a Princess Leia standalone comic, and there's a Darth Vader one. And there's another one coming out next week. Uh, which is uh, with the, the last Padawan. Yes. I think it's Kana, the last Padawan. Yeah. Cool. That's actually pretty cool. And that's from Mar Marvel's Marvel. doing all these books. Yeah, well, my Marvel owns Star Wars. Uh, Disney owns Star Wars. Disney owns Marvel. Ah, I yeah. So, um, so the premise of Darth Vader is uh, this: is right after the first Death Star blows up, 
and you know, uh, Darth Vader is a little, he's disgraced. Mm. He let this happen. It was on his watch. So, uh, you know, he's got to kind of earn, he's got to earn his place back in the Empire. Wow. Um, and he does it through conniving and the, using the Force and, you know, being Darth, being an evil guy. Wow. Uh, issue number three, uh, he, he actually has an ally by the name of, of uh, Dr. Afra, a woman. Amazing. Um, kind of described as a female Indiana Jones in space. Amazing. And, um, she even has a couple of Indies uh, lines. Does she? Does she? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, yeah, she said instead of, uh, she's actually attacking a museum. Uh -huh. She said, this belongs in, uh, um, out in the world. Huh. Okay. Instead of this belongs yeah, 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 yeah. in the museum. Oh, right on. So right on. Right on. Sort of his line. I so. actually loved oh, those, cool. I loved those giant size Star Wars that Marvel put out. The um, Treasuries? The Treasuries. And I also loved that first series. Who was the artist on that, the first Star Wars? Oh, Chicken. And it wasn't, it, but there was another one. There were ones that were, they, they, they took place on a, on a, on a ship out in the middle of the ocean fighting dragons and stuff and do you remember those? No. It was like around issue 19 or 20. I can't no. remember oh that. Oh my god, those. I, I stopped reading after yeah. that. I'm like, you have more Star Wars stuff? So I read it with the Green Bunny. Uh -huh. Oh, the I'm Green like, Bunny one, yeah. Then I'm like, in the Jacks. It was based, yeah, based yeah. on the Magnificent Seven, that whole, that to whole be, thing. I gotta be honest, I was like, I'll see you guys later. No green yeah, bunnies. No, there's no green bunnies. No, no. Thank you. Yeah, the I green bunny really turned me off. Too. Yeah, it was like, oh my god. And if it's the Magnificent Seven, I swear to God, I was so against genres back when I was a uh -huh, kid. Right on. The only, the only genre I liked was kung fu stuff. Sure, totally. I love the kung fu theater. But I was, everything else is like, man, nah, nah. <laughs> right you know, um, and, and horror. Horror uh -huh. and kung fu. Yeah. So, two things. Are there any good horror kung fu movies out there? Oh, you know what? I think we should... We should, we should we make one. Should Let's make should, one. Yeah, why I not? think it would be a blast. Do you want to make one? We should uh, make I, one. You need an Asian in there, so yes, I would like to <laughs> Excellent. do that. Excellent. You know, let's do <laughs> that, and we'll get Brian to direct. We'll okay, kick, we'll Kickstarter it. Nice. <laughs> you can, I, we just made $14 million right there. <laughs> right, but the budget was 30 so What would you, was, Brian? Yeah, we're still. What would you title a horror kung fu movie? Here, move that one over. Here, this one there here. There you go. It's on. Oh, it's on? Good. It's on. Do you know of any horror kung fu movies? Are there any. Horror fight. Kung Fu uh, movies. Turn it back on. Flip it back on. Oops. All right. Horror Kung Fu movies. No, I am not uh, familiar with with any. See, this is um, something that needs to happen. We can corner the market. On Maybe we can get Nathan Fillion to Kickstarter a horror Kung Fu movie with us. Why can't we do it? I haven't seen oh, a ton of Kung it. Fu. Yeah, uh, like uh, the F Fist Way? Uh, like, you know, there's like Game of Death. There's like Fist of Fury. Oh, those are the Bruce Lee ones. And mm -hmm. they're, 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 you know, they're like the Five Deadly Venoms. And, I mean, there's a whole... Drunken Master. Yeah, Drunken Master. Maybe there's a reason the two genres have yet to be mixed. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I, I would love to see them. Like, what happens when, like, a kung fu guy's fist goes through a zombie's face? Like... Uh, there would be a lot of debris. Yeah. It would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well yeah, okay. Now, this, this is good that you're here, um, <laughs> Eric, because uh, you have a question? it means something uh, interesting will be said on this fucking show. Yes. Well, which well, show is this, by the way? Is this, it this, I Saw this, Comics? This, this, no, tell them, Steve. Yes, this is I Saw Comics. Okay, okay. Um, did you find out, obviously you've watched, uh, it's not obvious though because I don't watch our show, uh, but did you watch every episode of Walking Dead? Like, uh, are you all caught uh, well, up? Well, I'm all caught, I'm all, I'm, I'm not caught up with this season yet. Mm -hmm. When I, when I got the part, yeah, I, I, there's, there's a, I'm still two episodes short. Okay. Um, I know what happens though because I can't, because my feed just says spoilers and RIP this person, and RIP that person. Um, but, but, uh, but when I booked the part, I was, I'd already binge watched seasons one and two. And then I moved. I moved over to a binge watch um, uh, House of Cards, which I was on uh, briefly as well. And and then I was about to move back to. And then I then I binge watched Breaking Bad, and I was about to move back to Walking Dead. And um, I booked the part, and I was like, okay, well now I got to binge watch seasons three and four. And I started to binge watch three, and like my dreams at night were just covered in gore and and. Of course. Well, and you were I mean, trapped was, in a prison, and there yeah, was a it was the it was it was like it was like just it was just it was really scary, and I mean like scary on the level like season five episode one with the with the yeah, terminus. terminus yeah oh my god yeah that scared the shit out of me because cannibals are real you know like people really will eat each other right, if, sure. if, if you know the bees die or whatever and 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 so I I, uh, I I got too freaked out and then I decided you know what it's probably better for me. Not not to know, uh, as the doctor at this place, not to know so much about the, the group that's coming yeah. in. And so I, I stopped then, and then after we were done shooting, I went back and finished four, and, and now I'm two episodes short on five, so. 
That is a well-formulated way of saying, oh, I didn't get around to it. <laughs> 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 I thought like, well, you'd appreciate yeah, the specificity. Yeah, I like that. I was like, well, Ryan usually says, I just couldn't. I'm not, I'm, I'm not as practiced at soundbiting as you guys are. Oh, I just love it. I was like, I don't need to watch this. I fucking lived it. So <laughs> like, oh, I'll never watch me more than once. Like, yeah. my, I, I'll have my managers and stuff pick scenes and stuff, because I can't. Like, I can't think of anything right. more. Like, my, my question was, didn't it seem like the, the, the core team, you know, Rick and Daryl, mm-hmm. those guys, it uh, them killing zombies almost became not even a challenge for a little while where they didn't seem nervous mm. uh, you know they would come upon a, a cluster of zombies and they would just dispatch it, uh, with them and like it was no big thing mm-hmm. and then it kind of turned now it's kind of turned back into like it's a big deal again right zombie. it was, I it was think it's so much that I think it's that it became um, who do you trust mm. And that's that's always since the governor. It's been who do you trust? Mm. You know, yeah, do you? I know. <laughs> I think the beginning. I think the beginning of the part of the season. I mean, you know, Scott mentioned this a little bit. He said, you know, and I think you can even see it. And there's a scene in the car with with uh, uh, Carol and and I'm mixing up character and actor names now. Carol and Daryl. Yeah. Um, uh, where a zombie comes up and they both go like this and they go. Oh. Yeah, like you know, yeah, 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 like yeah. I think I think they wanted a world where they're. You know, and I, as I'm looking back on this season now, I'm sort of seeing how it's structured. This is not inside information that I had, but they have all these closed circuits that they come into. These other survivor groups, how did they do? And um, you know, uh, you know, a couple. Of my director on set said this is a world now where the people are more dangerous than the zombies. That's kind of the world we're playing in right now, and that's that's. I think they successfully did that, but I'm glad that the. The monsters are coming back and being scary uh, again. As a viewer, I, I would like to see something, uh, a, a new storyline, something that isn't like, okay, we're now with this group of people. Mm. Can we trust them? Mm. Yeah, it's mm. kind of a little played out, I mm. believe, you know? Now, you don't have to commit to anything, Eric, because you're an actor and you don't right want to fuck anything up for right. yourself. <laughs> I can say it because my life has been one colossal fuck up. <laughs> What's one more thing? <laughs> oh, I've talked myself out of plenty of jobs, believe me. Yeah, now we all met at this Walker Star. Was that your very first one? That was the very first one I was invited to. And yeah. uh, what, was, what was your thoughts on all I, that? I just I was blown away by it. Well, first of all, I really kind of expected to be sort of I'm 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 I'm, I'm I, these days just because our life is going so well, it's hard not to be relentlessly positive. But join um, the club, my friend. Yeah, join I mean, the club. I, but it, it but it but it. Your life is going well. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. gee, I, I, yeah, maybe you didn't get the indication by no. in my Instagram or my tweets or yeah. my general disposition. Here's what's really but, weird is that your life's going really well too, Brian. Yeah. Just it don't is. I don't, I don't succumb to that positivity. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Continue your life. Well, going no, on. but anyway, you know, it, 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 it you know, that I kind, I, I don't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if people were going to be weird or if people were going to be welcoming. And like, really, like, I finally understood the love of the show and why people love it so much. And it was fun for people to meet me, I guess, but it was more fun, really, in my in my mind, to meet them because, you know, people people I'm interested in people. People had all sorts of interesting stories. There was this one kid that came up, and I, I used to be a cartoonist for High Times a long time ago. High Times. And <laughs> and um and this kid came up, and he's there with his family, and she said he wants to draw, and I said, well, you know, how to draw comics the Marvel way, yeah, <laughs> you know. But I, but I mean, for me, that was my introduction to anatomy. Right. So yeah, you do some circles and stuff, and. And then, so I recommended that um, as a first time book. Mine was my father molesting me. <laughs> <laughs> these, are these mics on? All circles. <laughs> Hello, is anyone there? <laughs> um, but anyway, so so the, then I, this 14 year old kid who was there with his family, adopted kid, I brought him around this, my side of the table, I gave him a drawing <laughs> lesson. And so that was fun, you know? It's like, I, I, I really expected there to be somebody like you know coming up and accosting me about the death of Beth and and all of that. That didn't happen. It, uh, somebody people came up and asked questions and stuff, but I they I, don't you hold know, you accountable. They those don't, are, those no, are the they, real. Those that's are the not real my. I, I don't I don't go for those. It's it's like I don't. Yeah, I mean it's just like I you know I'm I'm the last rung on the ladder. Me and then the editor. You know, after they shoot us, it's the editor and it's yeah, the sure. final. I'm just a draft of the script that's been written by somebody else. So when I'm acting, I don't blame you. Yeah. yeah. So. Were there any lines like you didn't want to say? Uh, that you're like, oh. Yeah, that whole he not was on, by his dad. <laughs> <laughs> not on, not on, not on, not on, not on this show. There have been lines on other shows that I haven't wanted to say. And how do you handle that as an actor? Do you because like, there are shows that I watch and sometimes they have lines and and I I feel like if I were an actor, 
I would say this sounds ridiculous. This doesn't sound believable. Right. This uh, is poorly phrased or worded. Mm. Uh, can I say it a different way? I, uh, and then you have two, you have the writer and the director. That's right. the those are the two people that you have to get to agree with you. I guess. I, Maybe yeah, not so or, much. Or the there might be an onset producer too that you'd have to get to agree with you. But you know, I, most of the time I try to make difficult things work because sometimes there's something good in it that you can kind of run into by accident. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, uh, a conversation can be had if some. I'm I'm a big fan of like cutting things that I can act. If I I don't want a character to say I feel sad today. If you just right. can know that. If you can just feel that, um, but show, you know, I'm show also, it in your eyes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Let him it. let him see it inside me. Let him see my own pain exposed for the world to see. Uh, but I'm also a writer. I'm writing a pilot right now for Tom Fontana that we're getting no notes from on Friday. He's uh, Oz, right? Oz, yeah. yeah. And so I know that I've stayed up till four in the morning working on those lines. So sort of out of respect, I kind of try not to do that. Yeah. The, the there was a rooftop scene in but Walking you know your Dead. Shit's good. Yeah, <laughs> I work on it really hard, you know. Uh, it's, so, some it's, shit's not safe. That's one of those guys who just phone it in. No, but I mean, these guys, these guys are at the top of their game, you know, and Scott's gone through it with a fine tooth comb gotcha. to, like, get just the exact thing. The, the scene I did on the rooftop, um, I, it was four and a half or five pages. The scene was even longer than, than what ended up on screen in, in that episode four where I'm on the rooftop with Beth. I did that word for word, and I, I messed up. I flipped two words, and the mm -hmm. script supervisor was over there, and she's like, Nope. Flip them back. <laughs> you can't do that. And I was like, all right. So, um, yeah. Tom Fontana is an extreme case, though. He's a guy that you're like, well, I don't need to question Tom yeah, Fontana. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But, but you may work with other writers, directors, producers on something where you're like, mm, this mm. doesn't exactly, it does, just doesn't sound Sometimes natural. I'll work with writers who are like younger or less, mm -hmm. maybe less experienced than me. And, and Living out of dumpsters. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Okay. I, I can, you can suggest and you can ask. And about half the time, if you ask it as a question, people will likely agree with you. Well, the problem with writers I've found, and even within myself, is everything is perfect. Yeah. No, nothing should be changed. Right, this right, is right, the right, way right, it right, needs right. to be. Right. Uh, you know, the whole kill your darlings thing yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. people are so unwilling to do, even right. if it helps the project, you know, like abridging things at times rather than, like you said, like showing it in your eyes rather yeah, than yeah. being like, oh, I'm so sad, yeah, yeah. really does work well. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm from the sort of Samuel Beckett school of, of writing. I, the less is more thing. Also, I have to collaborate with my wife. Mm -hmm. She's my writing partner. So we've gotten over this is mine and this is yours pretty quickly with each other. And because we practice that with each other, we're not too attached. If somebody's got a better idea on set, we're going to use it. Cool. We'll take credit yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 When the Oscar's being given, yeah, right, exactly. you're not going to you know. say, hey, that was uh, that you know, shit box over yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, but it... But it you know, but we're open to that. That's the kind of environment we like to be in. So that's a, that's one of the things that's good about working with Kevin is he is masterful at dialogue, mm. yet not so precious that if you come up with something that he likes a little better, he won't use it. Right on. You know, and it's only the um, the, the the extremely. Uh, egocentric or, or those who need their self-esteem bolstered who have to say like uh, oh I you know you'll watch press kits and oh. I watch a press kit for Devil's Rejects okay and uh, remember in the very beginning did you see it yeah the uh, the, uh, the Rob Zombie thing yeah yeah okay when Captain Spaulding is uh, banging that real fat lady I, I uh, liked it so much I actually watched the documentary that came along with the DVD I think so. the documentary is better than the movie uh, really okay <laughs> great cool it, it's really mm -hmm. interesting um but she, whatever she called him, she came up with like a nickname mm -hmm. for him. Like this is five years ago. That I yeah, I can't so remember it. what it was either. But in the press kit, she made sure that everyone knew that she came up with that on ah, set. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. like I, yeah. I, I this had, wasn't in the script. Like oh, I came this up was this. improvised. Right. Yeah, this was ad lib. This was not something that Rob Zombie wrote. You know, right. I, I, because I guess people just want to take credit for. Things that they nobody gives a shit. Right. Nobody well, gives a shit about that particular line. How did it make it line. into the press kit? For God's sakes! I don't know. Maybe somebody was like, "Let's make her look like a fool." Yeah, we don't <laughs> have enough. We don't have enough material. We'll just throw that in there. Yeah. We can't get it long. Yeah. I, I agree though. Sure. That was one of the most interesting behind-the-scenes documentaries I've ever it's seen. It's great, and I love watching documentaries. I love watching rock and roll documentaries and movie-making documentaries. Mm -hmm. Are a new fave. You know, I watched Give Me Shelter for the first time uh, a couple weeks ago. What'd you think? It, it, 
it's astounding. Isn't it? That that aerial shot when they show people just parking on the side of the road yeah. and walking is yeah. fucking amazing. It's it's frightening and that even that freeze frame they got the, the blurry freeze frame of the guy at, at oh, Altamont. The, with the knife. Yeah. I mean it's 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 terrifying. And just the whole there's and do you remember there's one shot of a guy tripping out like on L S D, like sort of off to the side of the stage and he's like mm -hmm. doing, he's like his eyes are rolling back into his head and then finally a guy grabs yeah. him and rips him off the stage. Yeah. I mean that just captures that whole era, that sort of whole like, you know, we're eating each other sickness of <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh well, you mentioned your wife as your writing yes. partner. Um, and now is a good time to bring it up. Tell him you were fucking lying. <laughs> That I was going on and on about his wife. Actually, fucking yeah. admit it. Just <laughs> fucking admit it. He wasn't going on and on. He did mention it. I, I, me, mentioned, it, I mentioned it to Mike, and, yeah, right. and Mike will verify this. Oh, yeah. Listen to him. Listen to how upset he was by it. Meanwhile, he flips everything else I ever for, say. For in people my who life. don't have a context, before we like, <laughs> yes. dive deep into this, all, no, all of a sudden, yes. I'm the therapist from yes. some kind of monster. Okay, this is why you. you guys brought me in. But but before we dive into this, my wife was on an episode of Bored to Death. Um, I, I married way up. She's I'm literally she's literally one of those. We walk down the street together, and I know every third guy that I pass is like, how did he end up with her? You know, I mean, she's, she's very a, beautiful. She's a beautiful, she's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. Or uh, somebody's abducting that woman. <laughs> <laughs> Call the cops. So uh, she was on Bored to Death, and she appears topless in a scene with Ted Danson. And then, uh, and and she's like really beautiful and sexy. She's got a silver fox thing at the beginning of the, that episode. She's actually with Jim Jarmusch, oh, so you can see she's got Jarmusch. like yeah, she's like going yeah. from silver fox to silver yeah. fox, right? And um and so she's topless in the scene. And then and the the story is is that um that scene was added back later. Uh, uh it, it, there's a three month gap between between uh, when she didn't, when she was just the character and when she shot the scene that was topless. Yes. In that three month interim, we gotten pregnant and she was called back and she was about to show, like her belly was yeah. about to pop. And so her, her breasts looked fantastic, yes. you know? But she was afraid if they went, they kept putting it off, and she's like, "We got to hurry up, and, yeah. you know, let's, let's, do, let's it now. do this now." She's gonna be lactating in. <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, and then she she leaves the room, and then Ted Danson turns to his friend, and he says, "Oh, she makes me feel fifty again," which is like a just a uh, great, yeah, it's right, just a great, great line. True, and you had told Brian that that was your wife, and that's he, right. That's he right. He was like, he, he was not as, no, no, he was like, that was your wife. Yeah, That's well, he so said, cool. Brian I, said I, to I me out of nowhere, have you ever watched Bored to Death? And I was like, yeah, my, my, my wife. My wife, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you live in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, I, and I know that they used a lot of Brooklyn actors, so sure. that's, why, that's why I asked you. Yeah. And when you told me it was your wife, I had no issues saying to you, like, dude, your wife is very hot. Right, I, I, said which it right I appreciated, you. and you said it to me. You didn't, you didn't, like, you didn't go home and then no, you know, say you, it behind my back. Right. You said it to my face, which I respect. Uh, until, you know, until this little fucking moron <laughs> pops up and come and, and, and you come over it. to the he, table. He can't even give it to me. You come over to he the, he comes it over to the table. No, he's and, not going to give it and to you. Says, he, oh, he, could, he was going on and on about say, your wife. I say one thing to make fun of him, and he gets all he gets all. See, that's the thing. If it were, if, if it were it like... Around, uh, you know, it, it flipped around comedian. to me daily, and I, and I, can't, I can't get it. You're not, I can't Howard win. Howard Stern talked about her. He called her Nude Comer of the Year. She won nude some comer. award. Yeah, really? Mr. Skin, nice. she won the Nude Comer of the Year award from Mr. Skin. Have my hats off too, my friend. She's yeah, also an award-winning playwright. So Beauty and brains. you got to love it. So, now, here's my issue to you. Well, hold on. I'm not even... I'm not, not done, done yet. I'm not done yet. Because here, I, I'm meeting a new person. You don't really know him. And you say something that fucking weird out of nowhere. He, and he doesn't know you. So he has we're, we're, absolutely we're, we're, no reason to think that you're not telling the truth. Oh, come what, on. He, what do you mean? Am I right? Am I right? No, you're, he's am absolutely I right. right. That was we, wacky. That was we, a really weird thing. Because I, I, I mean, it. I looked right at Brian when, when you said that. I was yeah. like... Did, you weren't can't, really going off on on that. Can, you? Can you, like, can you, I can't even say it in jest. Right. It but like, it was not in jest. It was in jest. You were in a complete. Do you, do you think she's a beautiful woman? I do. Yes. yes I, do. I, do. I, I said it. I said it completely in jest. I felt we were homies by at that point. Yeah. Sure. And, uh, and there was <laughs> no, why not? Hey, you know the <laughs> whole the whole <laughs> argument here is about is about my wife being I know, beautiful great, and men great, sort of it? thinking about. No, I don't think it's like that, that's, that's not an argument think, at all. Your I, wife is your wife is I think most we, attractive. I think, <laughs> I, think, I think we all win here, my friend. I, 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 think, I, think, I think it's I, a win-win. I think the argument is Ming taking credit for being a comedic genius when really he's a socially awkward fuck up. <laughs> I, I think that, isn't that apparent already? If you ever figured that out through like four hundred plus podcasts? Plus, 
52 episodes of 400 a TV weekly. Show, right. Yeah. Right. Well, then, well, uh, well, then I don't know what you're watching. If, thank God Mike is here to back up my story because the only Ow. time I mentioned Ow. it, and I thought yeah. you had a good point. The only time I mentioned it was when I told Mike, oh, my, my girlfriend was, was very. Uh, was very uh, excited about this. Uh -huh. She was like, wow, like that's his wife? And Ming wasn't even there when Ming I said wasn't it. There. And you weren't there. <laughs> and I you never know. mentioned I think, it again. I think if, I think if, sort of, if sort of guilt is foisted upon somebody here, and, and I, I think maybe we should get a t-shirt with Jessica's picture on it from Bored to Death, and yes. Ming should have to wear it at the store for a day. I mean, oh, I would, would go gladly. <laughs> well, he'll be in the bathroom every five minutes. Oh, yeah. well, there's that too. Or, or me having to stare at it, I'll be in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You don't know. However, the you are packed. guilty of the same exact sin. Because you on the on TSD last week, you Go told on. Walt that um, I, I usually tell people that you don't fly. Mike uh, expounds upon that for about an hour. Which the only thing I ever say to people is Walt doesn't fly or Walt doesn't travel. No, used to. Used yeah. to. There have been times when you when you have said weird things that I'm like, oh, don't say that. But but lately, no, I admit. No, you, no, you, no. You'll, you'll say you'll say Walt doesn't like to fly, or he doesn't like these things. What else did I say? Was it like we were in Chicago and you said he's going through a messy divorce, and I was like, oh, don't say that. That's not true. I, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Again, completely out of context. Wait, did I really say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Again, I was drunk. Again, in jest, know. though. Again, when, does, jest. when does when does us? But like, I'll cop to it. Sure. I will cop to it. You I, you are like right now. Now that your feet are over the fire, you're like, all right, I'll come come on. I was, I was in jest. Come on. But yeah. you were sincere. Oh, come on. Ming, you have been sincere I'm, about so many I've things. I meant nothing by it. <laughs> Same thing with the Freddy Krueger girl. Yes, then the Freddy Krueger girl. Where's the, the, where's the, the joke Kruger in that? Girl. Are you talking about the Freddy Krueger girl from the first movie? No, no Freddy no. Krueger girl from... Um, oh, Freddy Krueger girl, the, the costume. The little the cosplay, yes, cosplay yeah. girl. Yeah, no, I didn't see her. Who looked like she was like 15 years old. She's 21. Right. Right. She's I, we didn't know that at the time. And she said that she liked your beard. She, she no. Oh. I, if that were it, it would be great. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you listened to Tell Him Steve. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, I did. Cool. It was, you did it was, your it was homework. Good. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did my homework. Shoot. I was gonna bring up. I was gonna bring a baseball for. I think for a you. Fan. You're you're a Yankee yeah. fan, right? Yeah. Are you yeah, a yeah, Yankee yeah. fan on the show? I've yeah. got a Bronx is burning baseball for you, signed by John Turturro and everybody on the team. And I'm, oh my I've, God. I've got it for you. Oh, dude, yeah. You don't have to bring. No, 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 no. He's I, already predetermined. The, oh, I, okay. I was gonna. I, 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 almost for a second, I reached for my game ball, which is the one that Daryl Strawberry signed. Oh yeah, after you don't. Know, <laughs> after I caught yeah. behind him, you know what? I, was like, I uh, caught behind Daryl Strawberry for oh, wow. a charity game, and I was terrible, and I dropped the ball, and the crowd booed me, and I didn't care. I was catching behind <laughs> Daryl Strawberry. And Daryl Strawberry is probably. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it next time I come down because no, it's a, it's a, it's a nice little artifact. Be wow. one of only a couple people to have that. So. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, and I mean, if you want to like sell it for charity or like raise money with it or something, you can do what you want with it. But I know I'm that you're keeping it, man. Okay, <laughs> what are you nuts? Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, what were we were talking about. We were talking about no, something. The, I got the, up. The, oh, the, the, uh, oh, the Freddie Krueger girl. Freddie Krueger girl. Player, Chelsea. Yeah. So, so the so the girl. You remember her name? I've met her previously. Uh -huh. Always is Freddie Krueger. She dressed as Freddie. Uh, no, she's a cosplayer. She dresses up as a lot of things. Uh -huh. and, and it's like a sexy Freddie Krueger. Sure. She's got one fishnet stocking on, and you know, you know she, she was a, she was a pretty girl. Yeah, but yeah. but to yeah. glance at her, you would think she was like 15 years old. Right. Out of nowhere, he turns around and he goes, "Oh, he likes that about me." And I'm, no, I, first you forget. I hadn't you, even seen you her. ran right up to her and hugged her. Like, like I said, I'm talking to you, We've Dave. He looks like before. Frankenstein. If a girl comes to the table, the arms go up, <laughs> and he just sort of like shambles towards them. I'm being friendly. Going, oh! I'm being friendly. They're coming to yeah. get you, Bob. Uh, it's a yeah. convention of people come to meet you. Some states are stricter than yeah. others. Yeah, and friendly, friendly, friendly turns friendly. into yeah. fucking assault. Or, yeah. I don't know why I was directing at you. I was directing at him. You did mention something about her when she was coming up. I said, wow, look at this coming up. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, mean, I, wanted to, I wanted to rub up on you guys a little bit. I mean, that's okay, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, though, welcome, meanwhile I'm in my corner doing, like, not, I didn't even notice her, and I look up, and she looks at me, and she goes, well, I like your beard. So now I'm getting rejected by a girl who I think is 15. She turns out to be 21. <laughs> well, I'm, I have shown no interest in her, nor did the Freddy Krueger thing do it for me. I'm not like, oh, man, I should want to fuck a girl dressed up like a fucking child killer slash molester. <laughs> yeah. well, that would be hot. <laughs> I mean, fan. you were thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't say it out loud. You're a horror fan, yeah. aren't you? I thought I mean, you were I wrote it in my I diary am. later on. <laughs> oh. I was in another sort of... Ming said something completely inappropriate today. <laughs> but that's not the half of it. I can't win. Erica can't win. No, I, and you know, now, did you hear it's he, okay. he threw it at me. He's like... 
No, nah, it was meant to you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you were pointing at him. Yeah. I'm pointing at both of you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't win. The things that Ming shouldn't say or do look like John Doe's journals in oh, fucking seven. seven. Yeah, like just journal after that's, journal after that's journal. That's what we write down. <laughs> Ming, you are not allowed to do You are not allowed to do that. It's like, holy crap. Oh you can peel and skin flakes and shit off too. You know, I have, right. I have, a, I, I have a, a limited filter that sometimes turns off. Sometimes. Oh my so god, my, like, I have yeah, no filter, so yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, I sometimes like really horrible, inappropriate things come out of my face. I go, oh, why did I say it? But you know what? Nobody ever remembers. So except for everybody except at this for, table, except for yeah. Brian Johnson. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know, these cons are, you know, their whole weekend fun at cons. What you know, fun at cons. Sure, friend. sure. Yeah. Sir. So speaking of cons, uh, will you do more? You think you'll do more of these? Yeah, they got. They're gonna invite me to a couple more. I kind of have to announce them on their schedule. I don't. I. I uh, I'm gonna, oh, okay. No problem. I know okay. for sure that I. I. I think it's okay to say this. Uh, for sure, I'm gonna do Atlanta. Okay, uh, that's okay. a big one. It's fun, yeah. very fun. And my daughter's gonna come down, and she wants to be dressed as Zombie Hello Kitty Princess Leia. Awesome, fantastic! Yeah. Whoa, yeah. okay. And here's the really cool thing. That's uh-huh. so over. When you go to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie Hello Prince. Honey, that's a trope. It's been done before, you know. <laughs> Eric, I think you, you've got to go to the Claremont Lounge when you're down in Atlanta. What's, oh, the, what's the Claremont oh Lounge? Uh, oh, it is, yeah. it mm-hmm. is uh, I mean, uh, technically it's a strip club. Uh, okay. But uh, the, Realistically, it's not. The average age of the stripper is, I believe, 57. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, it's yeah. just, it's a, it's a month. <laughs> It's a monument in Atlanta. It's a, it's a, oh, great. It's a, it's a landmark. We'll get well, a babysitter, these gold, my wife and I. That'll be fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah. You can totally bring her. That's I mean, great. You can, you can bring, you know, you go there. Uh, uh, they, this grabs a place where you can be yourself. <laughs> okay. Because God knows the strippers are. And, uh, oh, and, wow. and get a lap dance from, uh, uh, I believe her name is Bambi. She's 67, <laughs> is the oldest. That's fantastic. Uh, she'll, she'll be 58, or 68 by the time we're there. That's if great. If she's still alive. Yes. <laughs> That's great. I and, love uh, She it. dresses in a little bow peep outfit. And there's Maripo- Menopause Mary. She's, uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. she's awesome. Wow. Um, there were a couple pregnant dancers as well. So. That's amazing. Uh, you, know, you guys take your pick, my friend. It's on me. Okay. I will, right. I will, uh, you. I will front this. Thank you. Vinyl lap dance. <laughs> I, am, I, will, I will peel a couple now, points from my con stack. This is the most surreal. <laughs> Ming is buying me a lap dance. Yeah, and the most surreal, surreal really moment from my. Next time he calls you, you're, uh, my, you're my friend, Eric. <laughs> you don't have to believe him. Like, you <laughs> bought me a lap Home. dance from Goldie. <laughs> right. But beyond that, you know, you're on your own. There, there, there right are all on. risks included. That's that's that's. Right on. I'm not liable for anything. Like right. On. Bring another pair of pants. That's all I can say. Okay, you got it. Let yeah. me ask, let me ask you a question. So this was your first con. Yeah. Now, when anyone came up to you, mm-hmm. did they ask? Did they show any um, a- any curiosity or surprise when they found out that it wasn't free? Uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the designing or something. Or, or picture. No, you know, um, I, the, the only people that I, you know, I mean, because I'm there to make tuition for my kid, you know, right. and yeah. that's sort of the agreement when you come in. The only people that I that I, yeah, you know, I gave a lot of free stuff away just if I liked somebody or whatever. But the only people I I just wouldn't let them pay for anything were the were the um, the St. Jude kids that came up. There oh, were yeah, a couple sure. of kids that I met, and yeah, and uh, um, you know, and like that got me thinking that maybe we. We could, I could do something to raise money for them. We're still working on that. Cause sure. One of the other pl- plays that we're working on has to do with uh, cancer. Right. Uh, it's kind of further down the road, but um, it's it's been an interesting thing, and I, I think maybe we'll use that play to help raise money. Um, I, you know, I, th- initially I thought, because I, I, I'm from the Midwest, I felt very guilty about taking money for something like an for writing your or something. Name. Yeah, for writing my name. But it wasn't, I, I figured out really quickly that it wasn't that. Like I was actually providing a memory for people, like an experience, and the people who came up were so genuinely happy to be there. They didn't care. Yeah, and I didn't either. And it wasn't about the money for me. It was about the interaction. Right, I right. met some really interesting people. Yeah. I didn't meet uh, Freddy Krueger girl or. or oh, you didn't well, meet her. No. You know, I didn't. She was turned off because yeah, she, of, uh, you know, she ran out. Beards. She ran out of the building. <laughs> she changed into her Harley Quinn outfit. Mm-hmm. But um, no, Brian has a problem with, um, and and I was sitting there. Ming was gone. You, you never get around to the really cool things. Some guy runs up to mm. us. Were we in says, the lobby or? No, we were, we were at, at, the the table. Table. at the table. Oh, the table, okay. And he runs up, he says, hey, hey, bro, I'm tapped. I'm busted. I'm busted, <laughs> I'm busted, I'm busted. I'm busted, I'm, I'm, I'm busted. Uh, give me a free, give me a free picture. Ah. Uh, demanded it. Oh, yeah, demanded he didn't it? Ask. That's just rude. Demanded. Man. He did not ask, he, he's, give me a free picture. Right. With that little upturn at the end, give me a free picture. 
And we're like, no, go, don't talk to <laughs> yeah, our people. Yeah, of course I accommodated him immediately because that's yeah. my way. <laughs> yeah, we're like, <laughs> like, no, we're we're here to make money. We're yeah. here to, and and to have to explain that is very distasteful. To yeah, both of us, well, really. it's awkward. Yeah, I, I said I said we can't do it, and he goes, "Come on, man!" And yeah. I said, "Dude, I didn't come all the way from New Jersey just to take free pictures with right, you." Right, right, right. And then they get like annoyed and they scuffle off. But I, I'm like, one. Well, you, you, dude, you're first off. You're not busted because you're here. You have yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, I don't, I completely understand prioritizing because some of those, some of the autographs slash pictures, whatever, uh, are, uh, to get them with people, they're expensive. Right. So, so you can't afford to get a picture with everyone, right. or get something, get something signed by everyone. So, if we fall way at the low of that list uh -huh. of priorities. I kind of get it. We're at a Walking Dead show. Yeah, it, right, it, right. It we're not the Walking Dead. Me. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. not the Walking Dead. <laughs> the Walking Dead. But it makes sense to me. But but to to think that like I'm there for fun when I could be home with my kid, or yeah. I would like, or if AMC were paying us or mm -hmm. anything. And what people don't understand is like, you have a guarantee of X amount of dollars. Right. Uh, and if you don't make that guarantee, then they stop asking you to go. Right. Right. You're you're asking me to put myself out of a job, you right. fucking idiot. You know, <laughs> like so no. And and we like like you, we will like there were these three little girls, like mm -hmm. four, five, and six, and uh, somehow they knew who we were. And I, I could see them on the outskirts, like mm -hmm. very excited, but I could also see mom wasn't gonna pony up. Right. Like, come right. So get in call here. them get over, in and you're like, come on, let's take a picture. You know. Yeah. Uh, but if the dude's an emancipated adult and he's coming up and demanding a free picture. Uh, yeah, I was like, just like, go oh, fuck yourself. I mean, he might not be emancipated. I don't they, know. They, no he may not. It's a ward of the state. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the situation is, nor do I care at this point. There's YPs and MPs, all right? right That's, I, I, my problems and your problems. My problems kind of supersede yours right now, pal, because you want a free picture? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's like, it's weird. Like, the whole business is changing. The whole business of being on television is changing. It's it's cheaper and cheaper to make TV. Mm -hmm. And everybody's making TV. And, you know, there are these other things that, you know, we got to do to make a living. And, and it, it, it's, it, it sort of goes with the territory. Um, you know, I like I said, I like disappearing into things. I don't, my whole... My whole goal when I do something is sort of like on the Brian Cranston or Gene Hackman model. Like I want to, I want to come in and give my A plus game to make everybody else look good. Mm -hmm. Like I want to, I want, I want my game to go up so everybody's game goes up. It's not about me. I'm being of service to the other actor. So when you have that approach to writing or acting or whatever or just living, uh, uh, the idea of, of 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 selling a piece of myself doesn't really appeal to me. But the business is changing. I have a Twitter following now that. And that means when I do my Lester Bangs play that's opening in L.A. at CTG, at the at the Taper, that's going that? to open in June or July. Nice. Uh, I'm sorry, it opens in late May, early June. Um, when I do that, I'm going to have 50 more people when I come into the play, which is really awesome, like because that's 50 people who wouldn't have known Lester's work. So, right. it's it's a trade-off, you know. Um, you know, I wish that I wish that I made enough money as an actor not to have to do it if I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. You know, but I got a kid in school. You know, it's an extra tax that's, for that's living in New York. I, that's yeah. the way I feel. Like for my niece, it's like I'm, I'm going to send her to summer camp right this on. summer. Yeah. Guess what? I can't walk in there and be like, "Yo, bro, I'm busted. Let her come for free." <laughs> right? Is you she doing public or private now? She's in a public school now. Uh -huh. um, she does like half day special needs and half day regular matriculate, whatever right they call it. Um, but like it's, I want to send her to like a regular summer camp where they mm -hmm. swim and right on, know, yeah, yeah type horses and all that. Yeah, like canoe and yeah. Yeah. archery. There's yeah, a horse totally. riding um, program that uh, they they have for special needs kids that I guess it's geared to. And it's, evidently, it works real well. Uh huh. Right on. For especially Down's kids. Um, so uh, like that's you know that's how I in my mind that's how I compartmentalize where the money's going and shit. Right and on. this prick, even though it wouldn't cost me a dime to give him a free picture, because he's not going to fuck, he's just not going to pay for one. Right, right. I've got nothing to lose, and I would rather tell him to go fuck himself uh -huh. than I would to be like, oh, well, maybe he'll, you know, he won't watch the show. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make the same amount care. whether you got that one guy watching the, or not. That yeah. dude, yeah. no way on, in hell does he have a Nielsen box, and I'm, I just don't give a shit about yeah. people like that. You know, I think they're assholes. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not into uh, 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 privilege. 
You know, mm. if somebody feels like privilege, oh, the entitlement, entitlement. Yeah. the oh, entitlement yeah. thing oh, is like God. is like pretty is pretty. Uh, but you know, I only saw a little of that there, and mostly people who came up just were really happy to but be But you got there. spoiled because you're in Texas. Texas, the people are great. They're you said this on the yeah. on, on Steve Dave. Yeah, I mean, it, Texas has it, always true. been good. Yeah, it's always, always been, been really, good. Yeah. What's the I you know? Can I ask you guys what the worst city in the country to do one of these is in? Where did you? Or, or I don't know. So far, Secaucus. Yeah, right. <laughs> Chicago Jersey. was rough, huh? Was no, it? No, Secaucus. Oh, Secaucus. Oh, here, Jersey. Really? Yeah. Well, I think us and Jer like the stores right here. You can come oh, by right and see on. me yeah. and Mike and Walt anytime you want. You catch Brian in and off. Yeah. yeah. But you know, we're, um, um, what Secaucus was, was like an hour away. So uh -huh. Richmond? Did we do? We, we did, did, did Richmond. Yeah, it was a. Actually, yeah. Richmond was <laughs> great. New Orleans was bad for us. Well, that's that's a whole different story. But yeah, Richmond. Did you drink too much in New Orleans, or did you? No, no, I was. That, uh, that's a whole Being different story. I'll tell you all. all. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you some other. That's a story for another podcast. But, right on. Uh, uh, yeah, Richmond. I mean, the sh the show itself wasn't even that well attended. So. Well, let me ask. Let me ask it's, you guys. It's, a... it's you know, it goes. It's it's uh, whatever. Not exponential, but uh, it's by ratio. You know, the more people come, the better everyone's going to do. So. You guys are you guys are four or five years into the show now. Do you remember the the first moment that you got recognized? Uh, do you remember like the first moment where somebody really like completely like grabbed you on the street and said, oh, you're, or was I, it, I think, I'm, I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> I, I think for Brian, it's different. He's been a couple of Kevin's yeah. movies, so he's been uh -huh. recognized. Uh, I, uh, I, I probably had, a, had like a mall or something. It was, uh -huh. yeah, it was, it was cool, but I was like, oh, this, it's only going to happen once. So I thought yeah. for sure it would have been when you came home and your kids saw it. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Daddy! I get a lot. I know that guy. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> home a lot. They, 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 they make me well aware that I'm not right home on. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I had people staring at me the, at the subway the day after Walking Dead, yeah. and it freaked me out. Yeah. Because like I said, I like to disappear into things. He didn't even know I was a Jeff. Uh, oh my God, the he was son in on, uh, Blacklist. On he was Blacklist. in the Blacklist the, like the TV show two yeah. weeks ago, uh, or I three weeks it, ago. Yeah, it was amazing. Blacklist. It was a cool. Blacklist it was a cool reaction. Awesome. But, but I was like, holy crap. But I don't like it to be about me. I like to disappear <laughs> and, and have it be about the story <laughs> and stuff. And, which is probably why I'm sort of on a showrunner uh, track right now because I just want to, I want to make my own stuff. And if I feel like acting, I can just. Write something You're an yeah. actor among actors, yeah. and that's that's not the. Everyone's like, how can I parlay this into my next big thing? So, nah. that's that's pretty amazing. So, uh, so I can't imagine you've you've used like you you hold a certain uh, privilege, not pri like a power now. Like I, I've uh, I've seen it where a couple of the other Walking Dead guys, are another um, you know smaller parts, but mm -hmm. you know we had a club and we're like, hey man, uh, I'm so and so from The Walking Dead, and they're like, oh my god, and, uh, we got a table for you right upstairs, so, you know, packed club, yeah. and you, know, you get you get red led right up. See, I, I try mean, to do that. I try to do that at a network though, so I can get my right, shows right. Made. Okay, so, not at a, mm -hmm. not, not, not going to a club and getting not at a nightclub. In, I'm, in, I'm, uh, yeah, I, one of the producers said this, this show is going to change your life, and I I, I believe it. Claremont, yeah, not the Claremont Lounge. Yeah, the Claremont Lounge. Come on, we've got got. Got a seat right by the toilet for you. <laughs> we got an octogenarian in back. <laughs> we got more than, more than a few of them. All right. All I'm saying is now with with, with the power of Google, and everyone's got a smartphone. Sure. Uh, you may never, if you don't want to, you can choose not to wait in line ever again. Yeah. Well, in I certain mean, places. It, yeah, certainly. I, but, but like, <laughs> like really. The DMV, well, you know? well, okay, that's not that ain't gonna work. The chance to come here and talk with you guys, who I really respect and whose, whose taste I respect yeah. about Reconcilers, has been like a, a, a that's, that's tremendous. Cool. I mean, it's it's a project that was sort of fading away a little bit now. All of a sudden, it's Let's, people are interested in it again. So yeah. it's you know it's pretty cool. Cool. So. Yeah. Well, from what I heard, you wanted to release an episode every couple or an issue every couple. Months. Yeah. And not only that, a ninety-six page. Yeah. Well, we wanted to do months. we wanted That's to do a, a ninety-six pager every 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 four months, and then we said well, we'll do it every six months, and then we were like, well, maybe we should go down to fifty something, and it, it just sort of it sort of spun in on itself yeah how did uh how, did you mention this to shepherd your artist because that's that's the one that's where all the pressure is yeah like, dude you're doing like five pages a day right he you're did like, he oh, already no. did he already did um the first 10 pages of the next issue i'll probably release some of that wow okay cool yeah. i mean yeah keep it going i mean we'll, yeah, we'll help you out do, as yeah. much as we can well, great i mean yeah you keep us updated we will keep Fans well, this is this is really a thrill to be. Yeah, here. what are you working on right now? Anything you want to plug? Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to be on a new TV show on NBC for a little bit called Odyssey, uh, which is starting. Um, uh, let's see, a uh, new season of Walking Dead is starting up. Uh, that I have no information on. Yeah, yet. I, it, you're, you're still alive. My character's still you're alive. Still there. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people who are lobbying for that, but I think I think <laughs> Scott and 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 Kirkman are well. 
are well uh, uh, set. Is, in, is there a, what's that? Where, is it what's that? Was that change.org where you file the petitions? Like, bring, oh, the petitions. bring Beth back. Yeah, like, yeah. that didn't happen in my friends. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it's, yeah, it's dad been, is dad. that's been a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of that coming my direction. But I found, I found a way to deal with it. I just, whenever anybody asks me about that, I just post a, 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 a Dada picture. Like, you know, I'll, I'll post the picture of this is not a pipe or of the Mona Lisa with the mustache. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. And then people go, what's this? And I say, look up Dada is. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm radicalizing them. Right. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, or pissing them, them off, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and then, uh, and then my wife and I, like I said, wrote a pilot for Tom Fontana, which we'll find out if we get a thirteen episode pickup or not. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then you got, you got Lester Banks. Lester Banks plays opening at uh, Center Theater Group in uh, in uh, in the spring, and uh, and it's going to be at South Coast Rep for, Rep for a week. Then we come back. And we're writing a, a play with music with Steve Earle, the country musician. Ooh, I know Steve Earle. Yeah. Well, do you know Steve? Mm -hmm. I mean, don't know him personally, oh, but right I know his on. music. Oh, yeah. you'd love him. He's mm -hmm. a great guy. You guys would get on like a house on fire. Yeah. Without a doubt. That's cool. Lester Banks, Detroit sucks. Yeah, yeah. totally, right. totally. Yeah, right on. Right on. Uh, so you can find Eric on Twitter at uh, Eric Jensen123. It's uh, E R I K A J E N S E N123. Uh, the Reconcilers is on Facebook. You can mm -hmm. check that out. And uh, uh, TheReconcilers.com. And there was an Eric Jensen dot biz B I Z mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. got your resume on there as well. Yeah. That, Did you get the XXX domain? Or that's no. That's, I'm not doing that yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Taylor up. Swift like bio, she, did. she locked she them all like up. Forty domains. Yeah. Up. <laughs> she locked them all up just so no one else could. No. Somebody's gonna superimpose my head on something eventually. That's awesome. Just be, yeah. That'd be. Great. You know, it, I'm looking once, forward to that. Once you do that, you're, you've arrived, my Definitely. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody sued for that. Who was it? It was somebody. Madonna. No. Okay. No, she's been naked plenty. Tell somebody sued. Um, they put they put a um, a head on a on a, like a, a nude body yeah. or a porno body, and the woman sued. She was a pretty famous actress, and uh, she got like eight hundred bucks or something. <laughs> okay, right. I can't remember who it was though. I have to look that one. It's a little Photoshop cut and paste job. Yeah, like a, yeah it, it's weird though because you see, like th they do it to everyone. Right. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, they do They're it fakes to everyone. Everyone, sure. and and it, most times it's super obvious. It's. Like, but I think it's know. in the DNA. My daughter tried to cross dress me this morning. She kept putting my wife's bra on me. She kept like, and then she made me put on a shirt, and she thought it was the whole most funny thing she ever oh. saw in her life. Because you're gonna go see uh, um, Brian Johnson, right? <laughs> I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, Ming Chen's going to be there too. So it's like, get that bra off. <laughs> just, just hand it to me. Yeah. Like that scene from The Professional where Natalie Portman puts on a bra. I was like, who am I? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like Madonna. That's exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming all the way down, my friend. Thanks for uh, having me. This not be the last time. <laughs> Creepy fuck. Thanks. I, I want to come back. I, I want to come play girl. with you guys right, again. Yeah. You're blast. welcome back anytime. You. Eric, you're welcome back anytime. And if you don't take him up on it, your head's going to be in, a re in his refrigerator. You're just saying that because I spent $200 at your store. Damn straight. <laughs> right. So, uh, signing off from the Jessica Blank fan club. I saw comments. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mike. Oh, not at all. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. And, there you uh, go. Tell him Steve Dave, tune in tomorrow. See you later. Why do you do that? <laughs> Always talk over me.